just smoked another to the face, yeah, 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 yeah. She wanna stay. Singing to your bitch like I was Drake, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't just try to tell me you love me. Can't keep it real if you really don't trust me. Come with a real, you here, but a front, so you get my meals. I'm gonna for the money, money in the bank. Come on with a dank, scrolling the tank, rolling with the gang. You sitting out on the sideline, trip, I go to the hole with the rock like Pippin. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay. Hey, my name is Joe. <laughs> I got a wifey, three kids, and I work in a button factory. One day, my boss came up to me and said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. I said, press the fucking like button. <laughs> and leave a five-star review on all podcast platforms. <laughs> I, well, I, I didn't know I was expecting the show to start right away. Uh, I'm easy. That's Spin More X. Hello. We are Uncle Pete and the TD booth. Yo, yo. Uncle Nick on the ones and twos. Let's go. Bethany in the laundry room. Shout out. Be Shout nasty. Out. You know, there. be nasty on the ones and twos. Bethany, oh, you can't see there. her. Okay, oh, she's fine. Gone. She's a party pooper. <laughs> Big party pooper. She poops a lot. She does poop a lot. <laughs> Can confirm. Girls poop. Fun fact. Uh, best selly in hockey history. Yes. Someone out did Wallman? Someone out did Wallman. It was, it was a young man. A young Pete, young man. We have the uh, the video in, in, uh, in the um, the preset if you want to pull this up. But this is uh, the best hockey celly I've ever seen. This Let young me man say it. outdid Jake Wallman. It was extremely... Jake Wallman even showed him props on Twitter. No when way. It was posted. Yeah. Had to be legit. Oh, okay, it's a kid. Yeah, it's a kid. Yeah, it's, uh, I, think, I, don't, I think it's a high schooler, maybe. I'm not sure. But this, uh, this, is, this is an amazing video. And... Where's that? Uh, it's in the with all the other videos and stuff. It's <laughs> it, it, in the uh, graphics in the preset. Oh, you already put it in the. Yeah, it's, um, all, it's all. Everything's in the preset. Oh, already. this video. Yeah, this is. Uh, snipes it. Snipes okay. it. He comes in. What's he doing here? Hits the worm yeah. on Yo, ice. Oh, that actually was. How cool. awesome! That, is that actually was. That was dope. I'm it's amazing. Lie. That was sick. Very right. risky, by the way. Very risky. Very risky. But he pulled. Look at that. But to, yeah, executed to perfection. Wow. What makes somebody want to try that? I don't know, but he killed it. He My balls were hot. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, I think I'd have to agree with you and Jake Wallman. That might be the best celly in hockey history. It's the best celly I've ever seen happen on ice. I, uh, I mean, that was that was electric. But I'm sticking with uh, Wallman's gritty. Honestly, that, yeah. it's so hype when he hits it in OT, like OT to win it. I mean, I know he's hurt tonight, but we're gonna need some electricity out of the red wings and specifically one that is making his uh yes he's are we his, saving his that or are we making that topic sure i mean like that's kind of exciting so i don't know like, nick i didn't see it on the sheet fellas <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not wrong yeah he's, he's not wrong shout out to Alyssa for just being the best and the cutest and the smartest and the nicest she is the best she is the best um all right we'll, we'll say that we'll do we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that one a little bit later okay okay um nick. kevin zittler Yes. Dan Campbell guy. Yes, there are there Confirmed. is even further evidence of Kevin Zittler being a Dan Campbell guy. If okay. you uh if you follow RG three yeah. on uh on Twitter, he posted this video. There's another video we have in there of Kevin Zittler. This is uh him doing pass blocking drills while his wife's giving birth. Get the Oh, that's he that this was is, him. Yes, this is him. I remember this went viral a while back. While his wife is in labor. I mean, what else? He's what else, in the what room. Supposed to be doing in there, doing pass blocking drills. Like this, this is Dan Campbell written that, all over. That is that is definition. And he's wearing Jays. Like this is my guy. We need I'm, Kevin Zietler. Come on, the heavyweights. We got an open chair for you. You are a heavyweight. You got heavyweight energy. Come sit down. Pause. You'll get a free haircut, and we'll have you in. Uh, we'll have you in on the on the chair. It'll be amazing. Yeah, Beth will shave your bald head <laughs> and massage it. He's not bald. I thought he was bald. No, he's not bald. He's got the face of a bald man. He does have the face of a bald man, <laughs> but he doesn't have the head of he's a bald man. He's got the face of a bald man. He's got the hair of a not bald man. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I saw out there uh, a little bit earlier before I came in here from, from the other job is uh, Aline McNeil shouting him out. Like, yes. hey, yo, I tried a couple moves with this guy. He's a, he's a wall. Yes. He's a brick wall out there. This is a guy who, it's insane. The, the numbers he's put up out there. I think we have... Uh, a graphic in in Slack Pete of some of the numbers of his pass blocking acumen. Yeah, and it's extremely impressive what this guy has done in his career. I think he only let up two sacks last year. Yes, only two. Which is yeah. Here is uh, Mike Payton. The most pressures that Zittler has ever allowed in a season was twenty nine, and that or that was in twenty nineteen. 
The last three seasons had him allowing 19, 16, and 17 pressures. The Lions also go from a guard with a 62.7 pass block grade to a guard with an 82.5 grade that was 11th amongst all offensive linemen. This guy is a brick wall. So if you are worried about what the Green Bay Packers did to us on Thanksgiving, getting all that pressure up the middle, wow. that's not going to happen anymore with Big Kevin Z in the middle. I got He's the Aline McNeil Kevin. thing for you guys because I'm, I'm that good. Yeah, and this oh, yeah, is so yeah. some highlights for yeah. Oli McNeil, uh, he said at the top of it, he said, yeah, he's like, I'm trying to bunch of moves on this guy, and uh, I can't read the tweet, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah I, think, I think you say I tried something to strike. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I tried to strike, but he didn't tell me it wasn't on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny about Oli McNeil is, like, the more, he's become one of the more respected defensive tackles in this league. Um, and we talk about it like he's. I mean, we have it on this prep sheet today too. Yeah, yeah we got a whole. Up too. We got a whole topic. On whole Lee lot McNeil of stuff coming up. So you know, let, let's let's uh, give that some room to breathe because we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. What's this March Madness thing you got on here? It's just March Madness is here. It's not. Like, does anybody care? Nope. Yes. Yeah, I know Pete cares. Nick, I, do you care? I kind of care about Oakland and Sparty. Like those are the two games I'm obviously all in, and I did put in a way bigger than I wanted to uh, bet when I was pretty. Uh, down bad. Um, so I was about to shout out too. the Houston Cougars, boys. We're riding. You put Houston to win it all. Houston to win it all. So those are my three teams: OU, MSU, and Houston. Were you aware that Houston gifted Drake a jersey? No, that's not good news. That though. is that's the not Drake good curse. News for you. Yeah. That is very bad news. For you. That is extremely bad news for you. I am happy Tough. to hear though you're willing to root for Michigan State. Oh, I'm not like that. It's I mean, if they're playing each other, obviously, my brother was a Spartan grad. I am a Michigan fan, but I mean, I'm definitely pulling for state when it comes to the tournament. I'm, I don't get it twisted when it comes to that. I you're mean, a bigger man than Michigan's me. not in it because I want to see Michigan lose every single game they play ever. Well, I mean, you're so, <laughs> kind of bigger. Yeah. I guarantee you, MSU is going to win that game. I think they'll be. No, yeah, I think they'll beat. Mississippi. You don't get the joke. Yeah, MSU's well, one, playing MSU. One of the MSU's is going to win. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> but I do think <laughs> Michigan State is going to win. I think they'll joke. beat Mississippi State. It'll be close. Can I ask? But, I don't know if you're ever comfortable when it comes up, but like, because you you grew up Michigan fan, right? Yeah. When did it switch that it was like... Until, like, my freshman year of high school, I think. I think my freshman year of high school. What was it, like, uh, someone with your brother? Like, like, yeah, it was my brothers and my dad, and they, you know, they all brainwashed like me. You. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And then when I was like, I'm going to root for who I want to root for. Yeah. And then I started being a State fan. And, yeah, probably my freshman year of high school. Was dad, like, was dad pissed? I No, he wasn't pissed, because, like, my dad's not... He didn't go to Michigan or anything, yeah. you know. He oh, didn't go to college. Did. He just went, yeah, but some of his kids went to state too. So yeah, well, you were a freshman in high school at that point, though. Yeah, but my brother went. My older brother went to state as well. One of my older oh, brothers. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, Cole, right? Yeah. yeah, and all my friends went to state, and so yeah. After like eighth grade, I stopped really being a Michigan fan. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was I was brainwashed growing up as because when Bryson was born, my son Patricia was still like the head coach. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought about it before he was born, even a little bit after he was born. I was like, I might I might let him just be a Chiefs fan, bro. That shit sucks. Like, being a Lions fan has been, been painful, like some painful times. Some painful times. Thank God for Dan Campbell. Because <laughs> I decided to go to Detroit Lions, which could have been a questionable parenting move, but Dan Campbell yep. saved that uh, for being a bad parenting move. So shout out to Dan Campbell. Shout out to Brad Holmes, Lions man. Fans. We, we got a whole segment on, on him a little bit later, too. I'm I'm just gonna save it, but shout shout out to Brad Holmes. Let Holmes cook. He's he's fucking him. And I, I put it on my Twitter today uh, at Speaky Sports underscore if you're not following or X, whatever you guys want to call it. And I, I don't know if you're you're familiar with the story. He used to work at Rent a Car mm -hmm. like after graduation, yeah, like post graduation in college. Worked at Rent a Car Enterprise or Enterprise Rent a Car, and from there became an intern. And then from there, like obviously worked his way up to scouting, and then now one of the the best general managers in the National Football League. That story in itself. Like you want to talk about like this this entire regime having that grit? Mm -hmm. I mean that that's a part of it. That's a piece of it. The guy at the very top, at least executively before uh, Spielman and before Sheila, went through that grit story. F fucking enterprise rent at that point. You know how easy it'd be to give up at that point? Yeah. Like it's like name somebody else like that in a front office or running a, a team right now that had a story like that. I can't. And maybe I'm, I'm familiar with it, but like that's insanity. On top of like, and I don't know if this is a thing or not. I don't want to make it a thing, but like he's also black too. 
Yeah. It was there, so, so like he stepped up. I don't know, overcame fucking everything, and mm-hmm. then. And becoming the, one of the best general managers in football. Today. It's, it's all, fucking it's awesome. awesome to see, man. I, I love Brad Holmes. My GM man. got grit. I love Brad Holmes. I love everything he's done. A plus offseason so far. And I'm excited. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see what he does. With the <laughs> Truly Brad Holmes season. And with the signing of Kevin Zeitler, now he can do whatever the fuck he wants. I still think they're going to get an interior offensive lineman. But now that you don't need a day one starter, you don't have to force it. Yeah, you could do it whenever you want, and have yeah. a guy that you like. Yep, that you can at least for a year have him sit behind two Pro Bowlers. Yeah, three Pro Bowlers in the interior offensive line. Yeah, like it's pretty. It's a pretty good situation for a rookie guard, ah, Cooper Baby, third round to walk into. Yeah, like I'm just saying, it Cooper Baby, Zach Zinter is another big possibility. That's a guy, you know, you know, Brad Holmes loves him injured. So yeah, a guy who is probably the best piece, if not the second best piece on what was the best offensive line in college football for like two Man. years in a row. If they want a Super Bowl, they got to make a movie about Brad Holmes. Yeah. If they can make a movie about draft day for the Cleveland Browns, like it wasn't even a, a, an elite draft. There's a lot of maneuvering going on. They definitely need to make a movie about Brad Holmes. And what he's done. Yeah. And now I'm making, and I'm just thinking out loud too, because like now it makes sense, like all the deals that he signs these guys on. A lot of them are just prove it deals. Like there's no, there's no year for some breathing room there. I mean, I guess Cam Sutton got the third years. A few guys got through third years out of them, three years out of them. But like, you just constantly chasing that that carrot in front of the horse, you know, mm-hmm. with, with uh, these Bradham contracts. There's always one or two years. He just lets us prove it deals, and he's, he's getting the most out of people. But you can't, like, it'd be easy to call him cheap or something like that. But no, because he. Went through that experience himself, just at, obviously at the, like the general manager level of it yeah. all. So that's, I don't know. Brad Holmes is the fucking man. Uh, you said, look like you wanted to say something, Pete. No, I'm Brad just Holmes. listening no? to you. If up. there was going to be anything, the fade in would be on Enterprise Rent a Car, and then you know we go from there. Yeah, and we gotta Hon- get him as a sponsor now. Honolulu BS says, did you say Zach Zenner from North Dakota? No, not Zach Zenner. Zach <laughs> Zinter. So, Zinter. That, well, did you mention your boy from Kansas there. State? Kansas City, yeah, Cooper Bebe. Yeah, Bebe. It's, you know, hey, he'll Bebe. be a, a second-round pick probably, so if that's the route you want to go. If it's Xavier Leggett, Cooper Bebe, with one and two, I'd, Bruh. I'd mail myself. Like, that would be <laughs> such a good first two picks. I would be so extremely happy. Yo, it's just letting the kid walk in the parking lot. What yeah, that ain't cool. Yeah, what the hell? I'm going to smack her out there. Yeah, that's tough. That's Come on, People now. come flying down here. Yeah, dude. bro. All right, it, sorry. There's a lady letting her kids run around the park. But I will, say, I will say, I will say, my goal is to get hit by a car crossing Wilbur. Like, You've been hit by plenty of cars. I've hit, by, I've gotten hit by <laughs> one car. Yeah, your goal is working out for you. But like, and that could have been a lot better than it was. Yeah, it could have. Like, I got hit by. If you don't know, I got hit by a car in East Lansing when I was uh, I was coming back from class. I was crossing the Grand River crosswalk right in front of Peanut Barrel, like right in the middle of East Lansing. And uh, one of the lanes was stopped for me. So I started going on my bike. Other lane didn't stop, cracked me. I like rolled up on the top of the hood, got thrown forward, took a chunk out of my leg. Some dude walked up to me like in my face, like a grown man walked up to me as I'm on the ground, just got hit by a car and he screams at me. He's like, if you don't sue them, you're fucking stupid. I was like, bro, relax. I look up. guess what? I was like, come on, I was like, come on, come on, Range Rover, Range Rover, Range Rover, Range Rover, Maserati, Maserati. I look up, it's like a, Toyota, you know, Camry, like a 94 Camry or well, something Well, that kid's like a doctor now. Man, no. You he's, fucked up. His girl was driving. I didn't want to ruin the kid's life. So I just Stop. told him to give me like 500 bucks, and <laughs> he did. So. Shout out. I, if it, now, if it was one of those Maseratis or Range Rovers or Lambos that are racing down Grand River in East Lansing all the time, you better believe I'm down there like Peter Griffin, like – you know. Today it's five hundred bucks. It was fifty dollars. <laughs> no, it was. Yet. It was because I did. I needed to fix my bike. Because so that was that was my priority or concern number one was fixing my bike. Um, shout out to everybody in the Wilbur Sports chat right now. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button and uh, Mike T comments. Everyone from this network w- would let Brad Holmes sleep with their girl. <laughs> no, I don't. No. I don't have a girl, but I'd let Brad Holmes. What do I get out of it? I, I, I gotta, I gotta get something out of it. Like, I'm how pregnant. many Super Bowls? No, yeah, if I, get, if I get, if I get season <laughs> tickets, I'll let Brad Holmes have one of my hoes for the night. Like, just one year, just one year season. Tickets? Yeah, for sure. What? Oh yeah, one of your what? hoes. What's about a girl? I don't have a girl. <laughs> yeah, you don't even share your hoes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and tell us about Jack Labrador. Jack Labrador, <laughs> football season is yeah, officially you would not love over, <laughs> and Jack Labrador is here. Spring training is here as well. However, Jack Labrador is 24-7, 365 days Don't a year. Me as a learn, <laughs> learn how to play now on your phone at jacklabrador.gg. Two new symbols in a franchise changing three-point play. Remember that once you go Jack, you never go back. Go to jacklabrador.gg now and join in on the fun. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the offseason smells good. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here and we're bringing in the new season as only woodward sports knows how broadcasting live from the biggest party it's the grand slam festival at the detroit opera house come party with 4,000 detroit sports fans starting with wake up woodward and rolling into big d energy this is a party you don't want to miss with detroit's best djs food trucks and of course shots shots Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. How would you like to win not one, but two vehicles of your choice? One for you and one for your wife, your girlfriend, or your best bud. Get to Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut and automatically enter for your chance to win. Courtesy of Les Stanford Buick GMC of Ferndale. Lady Jane's. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Of wearing clothes, or actually the same old stuff. Well, you can uh, go to woodwardsports.com. <laughs> you can go to woodwardsports.com, click on shop, and you can check out the all new wearables from Woodward Sports the hoodies, the tees, the hats that are guaranteed to turn heads. Get the latest gear right here from woodwardsports.com and click shop. Back to the heavies. <laughs> <laughs> what up, though? Welcome back to whatever it's live with sports.com. I'm Easy Espo Guys for more racks. We got Unky Pete. <laughs> 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 On the ones and twos. Oh, what is that? that, that, that. Woody the Woodpecker. Yeah, Woody yeah. the Woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, smash the like button if you guys haven't already. It means the world you're hanging out with us on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, we kind of went to it a little bit during the beginning of the segment, but I, I, I kind of mixed this one up with some other news too. Breaking news somewhat. Mike Williams signed with the Jets. Yeah. One year, 15 million. It's a good sign. It's a good signing. I mean,. I personally hate Mike Williams for because he, he, he ruined my uh, fantasy season. But I would have won the chip if it wasn't for Mike Williams. He got hurt. Yeah, I know exactly. You can't hate somebody for getting hurt. I can hate who I want, but no, it's it's a good signing. He's a great player when he can stay healthy. Obviously, he is a very very good wide receiver when healthy. He dominates out there. So if he can stay healthy, if Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy, those two with Garrett Wilson with Brees Hall, like oh. Jets got a pretty uh, pretty good offense. They obviously got some offensive line help as well. Yeah. So if everybody can stay healthy on that Jets offense, they're gonna be pretty damn good. Yeah, I I didn't mean I didn't make the bet, but I predicted it'd be like one year, twelve million, the way people were talking about him being out there. But no, lo and behold, the Jets pay him fifteen, probably up to fifteen. Yeah. What did, what is what the specific say on that one on the tweet, or just said he's with the Jets? Oh, it's just uh, it said with the Jets. I already got rid of it. Hang on. No, you're, no, you're fine. It's not a big deal. But. I, I mean, there's a name that some people float out there for the Detroit Lions. I think it's kind of official now, or at least in my opinion. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. It's one they're... year, 15 mil. Okay. Does it say up to 15 mil? Or one like... year, uh, it just says up to 15 mil, up yes. Up to 15, okay. Yeah, so there's got to be, be, like like be a lot of yeah. health incentives in that for sure. Well, that's like the actual numbers came out today for our guy, uh, DJ Reader, and I think that one was closer to two years, 22 million. It's only 5 million on the cap this year. DJ Reader? Yeah. Yeah, like four void years. Dude, Shout bro. out to Brad Holmes and Mike Dizner for working that magic. That shit is crazy. Because bro. with that five that they saved, well, I guess the money they saved and, and signed a reader this year, 
and the money to save with Carlton Davis. They went and grabbed Kevin Zettler, Pro Bowl guard, for only $6 million for this year. The crazy part about that, Spinny, Jordan Jackson, $17 million. $17 million. You have Graham Glasgow and Kevin Zittler on your roster as, like, I'd say top tier guys, up on the top tier of the heap, for less than what Jordan Jackson is going to be receiving his first year with the LA Rams. Yeah. Landon Dickerson just got paid $21 million a season this year by the Eagles. Robert Hunt just got paid $20 million yeah, a year insane. by the Carolina Panthers. And obviously, we know about Jonah Jackson getting seventeen million. You get Zach Zinter for six million. Six. Remember, we were looking at all these contracts. Like, damn, they're paying guards like crazy. Everybody's paying guards like crazy. You yeah. just got a Pro Bowler for six million. I know he's not the long term deal, and he's not a spring chicken. But you can have a thirty. What is he? Thirty three, somewhere around there. Thirty. Thirty five, maybe. For one year, that's all you need. And then you have people behind him. That's just an amazing, amazing deal, man. Brad Holmes is a wizard. He is a wizard. And hey, credit to Mike Disner, too. Mike, he's, he's shout out Mike Disner. Books. Shout out Mike Disner. Shout out Rob Wood. Shout out all of the guys in that front office that make the money things happen. And seeing this going forward, just this is a guy who is a Pro Bowl caliber player. Now, last here's year. a guy. Now, here's a guy. Now, here's a fella. He's a Pro Bowl caliber player last year. He is. Getting towards the end of his playing career. I, I don't think, not to be mean, but you're, you're kind of getting up there, Kevin. We appreciate you, but you're not a spring chicken, like I said. Spin. He Spin. went to the Detroit Lions on a one-year deal Lion. to chase a Super Bowl. Yep. People are coming to the Lions to ring chase, bro. Brad Holmes. It is Brad Holmes. Dan that Campbell. is Dan Campbell. This is a Dan Campbell guy, and I guarantee, just like what DJ Reader said, when DJ Readers talked about his interview, you get in there, you have an interview with those guys, you want to play you wanna for them. You want to run through a wall? They sit down Shut there and they and talk to you about what they're going to do, and they look you in your eye and tell you that they're going to win a Super Bowl, that they're going to fight for a Super Bowl. And there's nothing I worry about more than you guys, man. Like, Could you imagine that talk, makes talking you to Dan play Campbell for them, before like, a job interview or something like that? Like, You're 100% getting that job. Absolutely. Dan Campbell's like, like Braveheart. He should he should have like audiobooks of like just prep talks honestly like he <laughs> would probably make more than he is his coaching salary because he he just he brings that that type of energy shout, shout out to him again shout out to Mike Disner for working the books like that and I think one important piece that people are forgetting and this is some people in our audience some people once upon a time in this room well I don't know if you I don't want to throw Nick on the bus like that but like what? a lot of people what want that splash hard? signing right they want like some of those big name guys out there in free agency. And that's just Brad kind of straight up told you that's not going to happen. Well, with these type of deals that they're cooking up between Mike Dizner and Brad Holmes, like DJ Reed only being on $5 million this year, Zettler only being on $6 million this year, come trade deadline, if they did want to add that extra oomph, that they, got the, they got the money to do it. They got the cap space to make it happen. Man, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then on top of that, too, you also have, like, the training camp cuts that are coming as well. Mm -hmm. And, and it's been, you already said it. Guys are coming here to pursue a Super Bowl championship. So, like, these veteran guys that get cut in, and come from you know, training camp off these big deals. And they're like, fuck, I just got cut off my big contract, but I, I want to win one before I'm out this motherfucker. Yeah. Detroit, and, it's a realistic place where it can happen. And you know who retired just this offseason? That might be looking to maybe make a run at a Super Bowl. Who? Half, I don't know, a guy named Aaron Donald. Who? Whoa. Oh, you're right. You're wild. What? Maybe Brad <laughs> makes a call halfway through the season when we're first in the North and sitting at the number one seed in the NFC and says, Damn. hey, hey, Aaron Donald. We have history. Come strap it up for a Super Bowl run, dude. I'm not. I'm, that's a, obviously a pipe dream, but yeah. No, I mean it's like it's not impossible. They they have history together. If he's in shape, but he and he feels well. If he's in shape. Well, I mean he's he's retired now. You know that I, man's I don't been know, working out since he was ten years old. He I did watch his combine on Good Morning America the other day. Or maybe it was this morning. I don't remember when, but he was definitely a fucking little muscle hamster. It was. That guy's a ball of, like, mass. He's a beast. Steve Wilde says that won't happen. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. I, I know. I'm not saying. Mark it down, but let, let a brother dream, man. I mean, <laughs> like, shit, to be honest with you, if, if, I mean, Adama can sue, obviously, different, like, stage of his career, but he has that Super Bowl ring. He said, hey, I'm, I'm not really going to jump into training camp when a team's ready to make that playoff run. I'll be there. I mean, there is that past relationship between the two of them. Allegedly, Brad Holmes was the guy slamming his fist on the table for them to draft Aaron Donald to begin with. If that if all that's true, I mean I mean why not pick up the phone? And the only reason why I'm like saying it again is put it in the 
listen, we've been saying some things on this show. Yeah, it's probably true. And they become, they, they become in tr- they becoming like to life. Yeah. Uh, so I just had to I just put it out there in the air in the ether because Brad Holmes is a heavyweights fan. All right, he just listens to heavyweights casually. Kid Impossible says he would still be under contract with the Rams. Skip says his '80s contract still to LA though, right? Yeah, he's probably they probably still get his rights for that's true a year or whatever. <laughs> but but hey, if they're in a situation where they're not in the playoffs. <laughs> Then, like, same with Gronkowski. His rights were still underneath the Patriots, but they got traded to the Buccaneers for, like, nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, again, this is all hypothetical and all, like, we're, we're like pipe dreaming. But, yeah. like, I'm putting it into the air so it comes true because guess who called the, Zach, the Kevin Zettler stuff? Mm-hmm. Over here. Guess who called the DJ Reader stuff? Yeah. Over here on this show. Guess who talked about the Carl Dames and stuff? Yeah. Over here on this show. I mean, I'm just saying. We might be fat and ugly, but we know what we're talking about. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hold on. Speak for yourself. Yeah. I ain't ugly. <laughs> Easy might be fat and I might be ugly, but we still know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's. I'm just saying, man. I, I wouldn't hold anything past this guy now. He's a wizard. This, no, I, I, shout to Brad Holmes, shout to Mike Disner, and then again, this, this training camp cups. That's that's what I'm looking for at this point now too. Is like who is is the guy that. You know, once upon a time was at the top of his game, got one of those big deals, and just the team's not willing to move forward with that type of contract into the season, gets cut, and now Detroit's a spot to head to. Mm-hmm. You replaced Jonah Jackson with a Pro Bowl guard for yeah. $6 million when Jonah got $50 million. <laughs> that is absolutely wizardry by Brad Holmes in this front office. You really cannot make this up. And easy, I did want that big splash. I did want Daniil Hunter. But we got three quality starters with that money four if you can add in glasgow you know instead of a guy like daniel hunter that, that's absolutely insane and they're all quality that are going to help this team get to that next level which we all believe is coming next season yep. and, and again like even if it doesn't happen through like a veteran piece in the training camp like that trade deadline is still there too and if, if what we hear is true brad holmes wanted to deal hunter last year who say he's not the same type of market this year Come around that time, the team's looking at the prime position. There's another team that's not doing as well. I mean, to be, when, he, when I saw the presser, he did seem kind of pissed off. Yeah. I was equally as pissed. I apologize, Brad, for the things I said yes. privately in the we, group we, chat. We, we but the group chat's getting leaked now anyway. My, my video might be out soon. Yeah, the group chat does get leaked. We, <laughs> there's a lot of shit in there. I was that pretty could pissed. Take me down. Oh, yeah. But I think, I think out of everybody in that group, though, we're probably the smoothest just because, like, we wild out on air. They know who we are. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah they, we're not they'll see some any, shit yeah. from us and they'll read it and be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that adds up. Yeah. You know, that adds up. But yeah, Brad Holmes, fucking man. Uh, thank you to Kevin Zeitler for, I guess, coming to Detroit and giving us the opportunity to help you get that Super Bowl ring. Does he have one? No, I don't think he did. I don't know. Because I think, who is it? He was, he was a sensi for a minute. It might have been Cleveland before. I'm going to look it up right now, actually. If you want to bullshit, or we can just go to break and I'll give you guys the answer when we get back. While you guys, uh, just just for sake of argument, I was uh, doing some research right here. The Lions still have twenty seven million in cap space mm, to spend. Top, dirty to me top ten available cap in the league. Still, they are number ten in the entire league. Wow. And uh, the, the Kevin Zeitler, he was, started with the Bengals, went to the Browns, Giants, and now or oh, the Ravens, now Detroit. So no, no Super Bowl. Did for he get him. one with the Giants? No, he came, no, he was there in uh, nineteen twenty. 1920, 1920, 2019, it's been, 2020. It's been 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's go to break a, real quick. It's been 94 years. Let's go to break real quick, and we'll keep some football talk going. But uh, Nick, tell us about Feldman. Yes, sir. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you. Catch Woodward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet of Novi every other Monday. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at WoodwardSports.com. Just click on Shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Order up. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod. 
perfectly fried clam shrimp platter or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango iced tea. The ultimate complement to our popcorn shrimp are all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service the customers have come to know and trust. I'm Wilburn Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford in Dearborn today and find the brand you want at LesStanford.com. What up, though, and welcome back to the World That Waits Live on Sports.com. I'm easy. I spin more racks. What up, though? We had Uncle Pete. We had Uncle Nick. And now we're joined by a special guest. Host of all 22 films, all 22 NFL films. Yes. Coach DC, a uh, hey, native Baltimore Ravens fan, new Detroit Lions fan, because, hey, he <laughs> recognizes ball. What up, Coach? Hey, man, how you guys doing? Thanks for having me on, Easy. I, pre- I appreciate it, and I'm sorry for, uh, for skipping out on you for so many weeks, how many times you asked me, so thanks again. No, man, I appreciate you taking the time to come on, man. I, uh, you've, you've kind of been going viral lately with the Detroit Lions signings, which just means – Everybody else kind of going crazy over it. Some of them are a little bit polarizing, but you have you actually break down the film. You, you coach the game yourself. Out of this free agency class for the Detroit Lions, which one of these signings has been your favorite by far? Well, my, my, my favorite would have been the, the first corner, but, you know, a trade, obviously. Yeah, just yeah. Because it was the first, just because it was the first domino that fell. But I think you know maybe from the messages I've sent you or maybe if you watch the, the video, like I don't, I'm not even sure that most Lions fans understand how uh, potentially dominant D.J. Reader is against the run. Not as a pass rusher, but he's a he's – a pro- it's almost like trying to block one and a half guys. He's so agile, and, and I can only speak on him because I've watched him play the Ravens so many times. So from a, from a film study standpoint, it would be D.J. Reader. But from a from a personal standpoint of rooting for the Lions, it's the corners. I mean, they that was a position of absolute need. Uh, no disrespect to the guys that played there, you know, throughout 2023. And look, they almost got the job done with them, right? I mean, you're you're yeah. you're a quarter and a half away from playing the Super Bowl with the guys you had, and now it's a very vastly improved secondary already, even before the draft. So from a personal standpoint, it's the corners. And from a film study t- standpoint, it's DJ Reader because now I get to root for him instead of rooting against him like I did, you know, for the last <laughs> three years. Uh, Coach DC, we appreciate you joining us, man. All 22, it's just such an awesome way to view these tapes and to view these plays because you get to see everything. And you, as he said, you're a Baltimore fan, and one of your guys, your Pro Bowl guard, is now a Detroit Lion. Yeah. Obviously, the Lions have one of the most complex run schemes in the NFL, and they use their guards a lot in pulling and wham blocks and different things like that. How is Kevin Zeitler gonna gonna fill into that role in the Ben Johnson run scheme? Man, he's gonna be playing next to Sewell. Like that's insane. Um, not you know Morgan Moses for the Ravens, good player. We signed him uh, on a veteran deal a couple of years ago, I think, out of Washington, and then we just traded him back to the Jets. But Zeitler and Sewell playing next to each other, I'm thinking of two concepts where they pull Sewell a lot. They pull him often to the other side of the formation. Um, you don't have to do that now all the time. You can you can run the same play, the same concept, and pull Zeitler. He's athletic. He's tough. He's very smart. 
I suspect that he played injured for three or four weeks in, in 2022, and <clears throat> that was the only time I've ever really seen him have any difficulty with pass pro. I forget who it was. It's a Lions content creator. I saw him or something on Twitter about his pass pro uh, statistics, and they're great. You know, Zeitlers are great. But within that, I remembered the only time he really struggled was when I suspected he was playing with an injury. Um, I think he was he 33, 34? 34. Mm-hmm. The Colts game? 34, so I guess some 33 or 34 years old. You know, so I think I think some would say, you know, he's a little old, but you got signed into a one-year deal, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you can still draft a guard this year that doesn't absolutely have to start right off the bat. I just – I think it's a great signing. You know, I'm, I'm sure some people would say it's the best signing they've made. Um, I think they've been hitting home runs. I understand Lions fans maybe get a little more argumentative about the particular players, but I think they've addressed so many needs. Um, how do you guys feel about it? I feel like it's a this, complete I it. free agency. I, I love it because now the draft board is his to manipulate. You do whatever like, you want. Whether he wants to trade back, he has that option. If he wants to move up, he has that option. It's It's not – and he was never the guy to force uh, an issue just because of his position of need anyway. That's kind of how Jameer Gibbs happened, right? But, like, no, now the guy who has been phenomenal at drafting the, the past three years, uh, he can do whatever he wants. You know, he's not forced to go 100% for whatever position because we're in, like, a contending window. So I, I think Brad Holmes is a master class of an offseason. I, I wanted to ask about the guy you spoke about first that got you excited. And the guy that got me excited, too, is Carlton Davis Jr. He's kind of been polarizing here because a lot of people don't really see him as a, a true CB1. Uh, what have been your takeaways of, of him on film, and what should Detroit Lions fans expect from him? On some level, maybe somebody like myself or, or you guys, perhaps, if you have a long memory, you remember a player playing well for years, and when you see them in 2023 or 2024, maybe you're still thinking of the guy you saw in 2020 or 2019. He's been a good player for a while, right? Um, I don't think the film shows a guy, at least the games I watched, I think I had seven games. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see a guy who looked bad in zone. He, uh, you may or may not know this, and so forgive me if anyone um, on your channel or on you guys' show is a co-signer of it. I don't give a shit about PFF. <laughs> um, I don't. I Amen. watch the film, and there's, but there's some error uh, uh, allowance for what I do, too. I only watch seven games, so there's two or three games. Uh, apparently, he gave up a touchdown to um, one of the players in your division. I think um, the rookie from um, Minnesota, the rookie wide receiver, Addison. Addison so yeah. I didn't see that game. I didn't, I didn't have that game. I didn't see that game. So, you know, it's whatever. So there's some error allowance in what I do, too, just by watching the film. But I don't personally feel like um, you have to go by just a number or just the film study or just – some other method of judging players i feel like if you're a true fan you're going to use as many methods as possible and that certainly doesn't have to be me it can be someone else i think carlton davis is a good player guys let's go bottom line we added another cornerback in in the free agent market as well a guy in amik robertson who kind of was forced onto the scene for the raiders last year because of injuries and different situations there but then he started to perform and he started to perform at a high level all of his players love him. You saw Max Crosby shouting, like, Detroit, you guys got a dog. What does Amik Robertson do so well, even for a smaller cornerback who likes to play that outside? Have you seen the film of him playing nickel? It surprised me. I was like, I was like, because the first film I watched was later in the year when he was playing a lot of snaps and, and pretty much exclusively uh, playing outside corner. Uh, by the way, I think Carlton Davis the third is a left corner historically for the Bucks defense. And last year for the Raiders, Amik Robertson, when they settled him at outside corner, he was a right outside corner. So do with that what you will. Um, I thought his nickel film looked good too. Week six or maybe week four last year against the Chargers, uh, he played nickel, and I was surprised. I think he's almost what you you guys as Lions fans would have wanted C.J. Gardner-Johnson to be, someone I, who you I can slide you. anywhere. You. I've been saying that, and, I, and I, I've been feeling kind of crazy saying it. I'm, I'm so glad you did because, one, you're not lying. If people think I'm a Lions uh, CJ, GJ hater because him and I had a little bit of a spat last year. But, like, no, I think we're not going to miss that because Amik brings that same energy. I'm sorry. It's got me excited. I'm happy yeah. someone else said it. No, I feel bad. I feel bad for Ramblings. You guys show. You interrupt me. Just hit the hit the button. No, no, you're you want good. To. I, just um, gotta, I got excited. He, uh, he's tough. He's tough. And, and he definitely – there's a little bit of chirping after the play, but – um, <clears throat> I don't think that Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell and those guys would have 
signed him if they thought it was excessive. I think they look at the they signed C.J. Gardner Johnson last year. Mm-hmm. Definitely plays with a an edge if you want to put it that way. Um, and they just signed Amik Robertson, who to me looks like he plays with a similar edge. I think the I think the Lions front office is kind of telling you something in some way. We need someone to do that. Yeah, I'd I'd take eleven Amik Robertson. That's just me and the way that I coached and the way that I've been around the game. I'd take eleven CJ Gardner Johnsons too. But I know some of your some of your other listeners maybe don't feel the same way. No, I agree. Yeah, I think right. We we are big fans of that on this show. Me and Easy both talk about it all the time. We love the cornerbacks who had that confidence who shirt because all when you look at the great cornerbacks of all time, a majority of them are like that. Like Dion wasn't out there just. Zipping his lip and not say he was talking shit to the guy in front of him. So yeah. I, I love when my cornerbacks have confidence like that and that goldfish mentality to you know forget about the last play yeah. and I'm gonna I'm gonna lock you down on this snap. I think both of those guys, on some level, I have read um, some what I would call oversimplification. Carlton Davis is really good in man, not so good in zone. Amik Robertson is not real great against vertical threats, but he's better and real smart in zone. I, I think that both of those are oversimplifications. I think that some of that is scheme-related. Um, the guy at uh, Tampa Bay liked, at one point in time, liked to play a lot of man. So you have a lot of film of Carlton Davis III playing man. Last year, he also played a lot of cover three, at least in the games I watched. And I thought Carlton Davis III did a pretty good job of that, except for one touchdown he gave up on a wheel route that you know, may or may not have been his fault. I think both of those guys are balanced enough that you won't you won't worry about them in man, and they're smart enough and agile enough and in zone. Um, I think it's a home run, you guys. I, I hope you're excited. No, I, I am. am. I absolutely <laughs> you know? am. I wanted to ask you this too about Amik, because this is one thing I, I I feel so much disrespect for. Maybe look, I don't feel as crazy actually, because I, I I agree with you. I think Amik's a dog, but like now that, that see him a bounce to the outside cornerback <laughs> the last half of the uh, last season, can he compete with Cam Sutton for that job? Is 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 that something you see him taking over, or you think he's going to hold that nickel spot and, and maybe move Branch to safety? Yeah, I don't – I mean, I think it's always tough to say, like, oh, someone's going to take this guy's spot. That's not what you asked me. But um, do I think it's possible? Absolutely. Uh, I think I think the guy is a starting caliber corner, outside corner, on, an, on a good – a very good NFL team. And, and you guys have – a lot of teams are going to improve in the draft and through free agency. In my opinion, other than the Texans, no one has improved their 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 team more than the Lions, uh, because even though you haven't addressed the outside, the, the, I call it outside linebacker edge position. You know, other than Davenport, everything else has been addressed that you needed addressed. Um, yeah, absolutely. To answer your question, number one and number two, um, I think that at this point, Brad Holmes is kind of playing a little bit with house money for the draft once he gets the outside linebacker position addressed. Because I don't know if you guys feel the same way. I feel like. I feel like that's got to be a serious undertaking. He's got to get someone who can get after the quarterback, and, and that's coming from someone who is a huge fan of James Houston IV. Nonetheless, I recognize they're going to draft someone at that position, in, in my opinion. I don't know. You guys agree? Yeah, I agree. Nah, yeah. yeah, we got it on our, a lot of our draft boards, too. Um, before I let you get going, I, I kind of confessed something to you uh, earlier this week, or actually in the weekend, and I said, and I said on the show, too, but I think that, Aleem McNeil's trajectory can be similar to that of uh, Baltimore Raven, Justin Matabuke, uh, with DJ Reader especially playing along next to him. And you kind of confirm those thoughts. And because, again, I'm a Lions fan, so some people may hear that and, and take it as an inherent bias, but you are a Baltimore Ravens fan and a guy who studies the film. Am I crazy saying that? No, you're saying the same things right now that I said to Ravens fans for the last two years about Matabuke. I said it in 2021 after watching a game he played against the Vikings, by the way, um, at home. And I was like, I think I just watched the best defensive tackle game that I've seen, um, at least in the time that I've been watching film. And that was 2021. You know, that was two years ago, two seasons, over two seasons ago. And uh, I guess three at this point. And so you, the, the words you just said is basically the same thing I said to Ravens fans. And I got some pushback on that. And I've done multiple videos, and they're still out there on my channel. For people to go look at where I said, hey, look, I think Matt Abike should get 50 snaps a game, um, and he's a badass against the run, and he's no fun to play against against the, the pass. The only thing I would counter to that with McNeil is our uh, blitz-slash-stunt schemes kind of freed Matt Abike up. Mm. Let's just use a, use a number here. Freed him up eight or ten more times. Mm-hmm 
then, and I haven't seen those same stunts used by the Lions as often. So were, were that to kind of happen some more, you know, you're going to get some organic wins as with a guy as talented as McNeil, right? Yeah. But having a couple of wins a game, maybe one, just one a game, created for you to get you, you know, 10, 12, 14 more opportunities to get to the quarterback. That would be the only thing. I'm not saying the scheme is deficient. I'm just saying I haven't seen it as often with Detroit as we did this past year with the Ravens, which was, you know, batshit crazy. I think we ended up with, what, 60 sacks? Yeah. Yeah. So, that, I don't know. Yes, I actually, absolutely see the trajectory, number one. Number two, you know, the only thing I would say is for him to get to 12, 13 sacks, I think you're probably looking at three or four that have got to be created maybe by opportunities that have got to be created by scheme. And because and, some of that was how Matabike got to that number two. Hopefully, I said that in a way that makes sense. Yeah, no, for yeah, sure. absolutely. And coach, before we let you go, I do just want to ask you one more thing about DJ Reader because you guys were seeing him twice a year when he was in uh, Cincinnati. What is his role going to be at helping open up Aiden Hutchinson on that? Because you look at like a guy like Vita Vea with Kalasia Kansi and how he draws a double team. I feel like DJ Reader played a big fact. A factor in Trey Hendrickson going out there and getting 17 and a half sacks last year. Is that going to help Aiden Hutchinson kind of unlock that next level? Because we saw him have all the pressures last year, but he didn't pull down too many sacks in the regular season. Yeah, you had a six-week stretch um, where Hutchinson didn't have a sack, mm-hmm. right? Maybe maybe week, week 9 to 16, somewhere in there. Maybe it was 8 to 15. I don't know exactly what it was off the top of my head, but there was a stretch there where I, I was concerned. I don't know about you guys. Um, in terms of reader, like let's just do it from a flat opportunity standpoint. There's going to be more second and eights because the first down run is only going to get two yards. Yeah. So just from a sheer numbers or data standpoint, there's going to be more second and eights and there's going to be more third and sixes because DJ Reader, uh, look, you guys are already really good at stopping the run. I, I totally disagree with people who say, oh, the numbers against the run look better because teams chose to pass more often. Forgive me if you guys have said that. I don't listen to your show. I don't get the opportunity to. Mm. Um, but that's not true. You know, the run game was normally shut down, uh, I would say, mid to late second quarter, maybe third quarter, such that teams became more one-dimensional. Of course, the Lions offense plays a role there, too, getting getting the lead, right? Yeah. yeah. In my opinion, I would say that now the run game is going to be shut down two possessions earlier, uh, such that you know there'll be more opportunities to rush the passer because teams will be throwing more often because they'll recognize we can't run the ball there. Period. Coach, man, I, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I'm gonna allow you to get back to your family. I appreciate you calling in. If you ever want to call in again and you got any one of your videos coming up and you want to hype it up and promote it, please, please, please reach out. I'd love to speak to you again. And uh, everyone, make sure you subscribe to uh, All Twenty Two Film on uh, YouTube. It's amazing stuff. Coach, appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm sorry that um, it took so long to make this happen. You had asked me uh, numerous times. So, you know, thank you again for for following up and asking me enough times that I finally was able to make it happen. (laughs) No problem, man. Um, It's it's awesome. Anything you want to shout real quick before we let you go? Any videos you got coming up or any other, uh, I guess, social media handles you want to share? I actually actually really love this time of year because I get to do, like, scenario mock draft stuff and some people don't prefer that <laughs> i get to be a little more creative and you know when you try to be creative sometimes you hit a home run and sometimes you strike out but it's actually fun to me uh to try to make the to try to predict what people are going to do unfortunately a guy like brad holmes makes that really difficult because <laughs> yes. now he can he can he can turn right he can turn left he can stop the car and, and go in reverse like you said he can do whatever he wants in this draft so it's going to be a lot of fun the first round is going to be a lot of fun. I hope he don't trade back, guys, because I want to see him make a pick in round one. Me too. I do too. Me too. Appreciate you, Coach. Appreciate you, Coach. Thanks for joining us, man. All right, guys. Have a good one, man. You too. Yes, sir. All, all right. All 22. If you guys haven't watched all 22, you got to watch all 22. It is the best way to, like, watch football you get to see everybody what everybody's doing on every single play you can hone in on guys like i, I would do that last year with penne sewell because i i'm gross and i love watching offensive line play especially what the lions do offensive especially line wise and to, yeah just watching penne sewell every single snap and seeing what he does and how many people he contacts and move around on all 22 it's amazing and coach has the such great breakdowns, especially when it comes to Lions players. He's turning into a Lions fan himself. He said it. So again, for the for the people that don't 
have the, I guess the extreme understanding of all 22 like that's that's how you start yeah you'll, you'll go to his channel and, and you'll learn the, like some of the nuances that you're not usually looking for because you're watching the ball when you watch the games great breakdowns great breakdowns well let me tell you guys about guardian alarm guardian alarm obviously customized solutions from real experts their professional technicians take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs they also have 24 7 professional monitoring you can call them anytime day or night and no guardian alarm team member will stay on the phone as long as needed and of course they have technology backed by people your safety and security is our technology that's been proven to work and people who have been proven to care so call them at 1-800 stay up that's 1-800 stay up and let them know woodward sports sent you Visit Dispo Dispensary today because March Madness is officially here. Dispo is giving away $1,000 of the best bracket at each location. That's Baltimore, Romeo, Whitmore Lake, Hazel Park, Bay City, North Bay City, South, and Ann Arbor. Get your blank brackets now. Fill them out and return them by Sunday, March 24th for a chance at $1,000. Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com, your local cannabis plug. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. of your choice. One for you and one for your wife, your girlfriend, or your best bud. Get to Lady James today for an award-winning haircut and automatically enter for your chance to win. Courtesy of Les Stanford Buick GMC of Ferndale. Lady James. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod, perfectly fried clam shrimp platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Fitness is the home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness, fitness goals. At Planet they Fitness, you'll experience a squeaky fitness. clean gym that has tons of equipment, a full body workout in 30 minutes, and all fitness, memberships include fitness, fitness training. You get all that for just $10 a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's a Planet Fitness close by. Fitness. More than 50 in Metro Detroit and thousands more throughout the world. Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supplies, hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers. With one major difference, they're family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Oh, Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day local curbside home delivery. Premier Pet Supply. Give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com Welcome back to the heavyweights. Press the like button. Please don't wait. I'm sorry. You know, Oompa Loompa? <laughs> yeah, just get done watching Wonka there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, welcome back to World Wide It's Live on WorldSports.com. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button. It means the world to us. Uh, we are during drive time, so the more you guys hit the like button, the more people can come and see this show after they get home and they're watching YouTube and the kids sleep or whatever else they got going on. Oh. Smash the like button. Smash. For Pete. From Thank Pete you. Pete. Yeah, uh, baby. Speaking of smashing, we've kind of made the proclamation that uh, Lee McNeil was going to have a breakout year this season. Yes, yes I think have. some people would speculate that even before the acquisition of DJ Reader just because of the trajectory he was on. I mean, the five sacks he had last year, that's off of like him missing a couple games, yeah. having a torn meniscus. Like, if, if, if you say it all the time, if you, if you played the full 17 or 16. You would have had seven or eight. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm very comfortable saying that. I think everyone should be very comfortable saying that. The moment, the moment it hit for me, the Lee McNeil, I guess, uh, I don't even know what word I want to use. Anyway, the coming out part of me. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis was the, uh, the Raiders game. Mm-hmm. And I just saw him like shoving offensive linemen like, like nothing. Then he only reaffirmed it throughout the season. I think once more in that Rams game. And then again, this is like his first year, kind of like highly focusing on becoming that pass rusher that he wanted to be from the interior. We we saw like a little bit of it last, two years ago in that Giants game when he played like he the, the that best game. game of his career, where he had like 13 pressures in that game yeah, that alone. Was, that was insane. And he was in the backfield. And we got uh, numbers of Ali McNeil from last year that Colton Pouncey put out there. And, and these numbers are pretty staggering when you look at them. And it, it's from Colton Pouncey. Shout out. Fantastic at his job. A great, great beat writer for the Detroit Lions. He says, uh, was on pace for roughly 47 prior to his injury, talking about pressures, would have ranked 18th among defensive tackles. He defends the run at a high level. He's got the seventh highest grade among defensive tackles, and he needs to see more, but he's on his well way of getting paid. And you look at his stats right there, and I know Coach DC just said, you know, screw PFF, but he was the seventh ranked defensive tackle when it comes to PFF. And that, we talked about it, was playing with nobody's next to him last Nobody, year. That was playing with Tyson Alualu next to him and Isaiah Bugs next to him. And, and I, I don't even remember, remember half of the guys. The, uh, Benito Jones looked all right at times, but these aren't guys that you know about if you're a casual NFL fan. Now having a guy like DJ Reader next to him for an entire year, this, this guy, Aleem, is going to snap. He's going to have a massive season. I'm extremely excited to see what he can do when he has a full season of competent play around him. Like, it was him and Hutch last year on the defensive line. And outside of that, it was dudes you find on the gas station. So, I'm excited Relax. to see what they can do. You're just being hella disrespectful to six foot four, 300 pound men. I'm just saying. Probably still lurking around Birmingham because they're also millionaires. Man, come punch me. I'll sue you. <laughs> That's fair. You know what? Yeah, you guys are fat enough. Yeah. <laughs> I want it. I want it. I want it. No, I mean, I, I've been saying this for, I mean, for a while now. And I, I, just, I just like to have uh, guys like Coach on to k- kind of reaffirm those things, right? Because, like, when I say I'm, I'm a Detroit Lions fan, I'm a Detroit Lions slap. You can spin it, like, whatever way you, you, you want. But, like, I think you see this on tape. Yes. I mean, I've had conversations with, with beat reporters who – they're like the old school, t- traditional way where, like, you're not allowed to be a fan of the team you cover. You're supposed to just kind of play it by the book, which makes sense, right? But I have reached out to one, and I was like, yo, as a football guy, a guy who knows ball, there's no way you can't get excited to at least watch – uh, Aleem and DJ like play next to each other in terms of like rushing the quarterback because it just it goes hand in hand. It's like uh, what's the, what they say in Big Daddy like spaghetti and meatball. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like... spaghetti and meatball. <laughs> and on top of that, something that not a lot of people are mentioning that we always forget about: Tyrell Williams coming in. Yes. Dan, Dan Campbell proclaimed him as the best defensive line coach in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You're bringing in a guy who who has a track record of making dudes Aleem like Aleem Neal into Pro Bowlers, into All Pro players. That's what he does. So you have that on top of lemon to the fish. On top of Aleem <laughs> being next to DJ Reader, that is a big, big change. Like John Scott Jr. was not it last year. And they realized that very fast, where they got rid of him and Dan Campbell said, I'm gonna go get my guy who I have faith in. Todd Wash, fantastic. John Scott Jr., not so great. And Aleem McNeil still was playing at a very high level, even with John Scott John Scott Jr. as his position coach. Now you bring in Tyrell Williams and DJ Reader to help him on that defensive line. The sky's the limit for this kid this year, man. I'm excited. And he's dropping bars. Like, he just dropped the album. Shout out. So. Maybe check it out. Uh, Chris reviewed it, so Cosmo's the best one out there. But, yeah, I'm excited for uh, Liam McNeil. That, that is, I know 
we've heard Jack Campbell brought up. And, and, and it may look that way at the end of the season just because like, he's going to have a natural progression of just like having that second year in the NFL. But for me, the, the number one guy that's benefits, I'm talking about the DJ Reader signing, is absolutely Lee McNeil. It's not really debatable to me just because of what we've seen him be. And I, I brought up the, uh, the Raiders game, and that's just off the top of my head, right? I just went and looked at the stats. Two sacks that game. Like, it's just like I saw the potential then. It's, it's, I think it's come to fruition as long as, obviously, you know, things, things, people stay healthy. Yes. I'll put it that way. Both him and DJ Reader. Nick, are, are, we, are we crazy up here? Are, are we saying wild things? Are you being convinced that uh, this is a reality? I've been saying it since uh, the signing, but multiple sacks – for guys like Ali McNeil or double digit sacks for Ali McNeil next year is ex- is the expectation without a doubt. I expect as well James Houston to pick up pick up speed this year along with the addition of DJ Reader. Like this defensive line is going to be 100% transformed in my opinion. And with that being said, one of the biggest things with DJ Reader coming in, Ali McNeil might price himself out of Detroit if a contract does not get done. I will stick to that. Mm-hmm. We still have the $27 million that Pete talked about earlier in the show. I am still curious when a deal is going to get done for a guy like Aleem and a guy like St. Brown. St. Brown a little bit more than Aleem, but yeah. with the expectations we all have for Aleem McNeil, I still don't think it's crazy to maybe get a contract extension done before Early. he puts up that crazy... Maybe training camp. Maybe. It's fair. Yeah. Pete? I, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, go ahead, Pete. What? How are you feeling about Aleem next year? I, I think it's great. Actually, I was just going to bring up my response to the uh, whole thing. Give me a quick second to uh, adjust it. But basically, if you look at their whole defensive line, including Aleem and obviously DJ Reader, and our website put it out earlier. Sorry. Yeah, thanks for voicing the. I got you. <laughs> I got you. But, yeah, yeah, obviously, I mean, look at these guys. I mean, the, the whole defensive line is absolutely fabulous. It's been, like you guys said, I mean, you know, Brad Holmes has done a fabulous job, and I don't want to hear it anymore from the, you know, listeners and all these other NFL fans who say, like, oh, Brad Holmes, he gotta, he's got to bring in a name player. He, he knows what he's doing. Just leave yeah. him be. Let the man do what he does. Let Brad Holmes cook. And, and I know that we – were the ones that kind of threw a fit at the trade deadline. But that's because, yeah, we saw what the, the, the potential of this team. And then come and find out, yeah, Brad wanted to bring a guy, a guy at this deadline. Yes. He was trying. He just couldn't get it done, unfortunately. But that's the thing we stressed a little bit earlier in the show. If you guys missed it, the beauty of, of this like a free agency class is he didn't go out there and make that splash sign. So you can afford to make that trade at a deadline mm-hmm. if you're just that much closer. And the other piece of it, too, that we mentioned as well, I think in the beginning of the show, was just like, and once more with D, Coach DC, is that like, he now has the ability to manipulate the draft to grab whoever he wants, yes. whoever he sees fit. And in my mind, I mean, that's there are guys like that in this draft class, at least alongside these players on this defensive line specifically. And I'm going to give KG the credit for it because he's the first one to put it in my head. But a guy like Jared Verse, who I think could fall there to like that 12 or 15 area where like, I guess I hear that the Broncos really like Bo Nix were like, I feel like taking Bo Nix at number 12 is like absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody else thinking about taking Bo Nix at 12. How about you trade back to Detroit Lions, still get your quarterback. And then now Brad Holmes gets Jared Verse, who he can start day one alongside the combination of DJ Reader, Ali McNeil. Oh, and there's some guy named Aiden Hutchinson on the other side. The, the crazy white guy that you always need a part of your defense if you Marcus want to have success. Davenport. Yeah, Marcus Davenport to rotate in and out of that yeah. too. And the thing with Jared Verse is like, at least my perception of him as a coming out of, the, of college is like he is more of like a, a, a power guy. He's, he's, he's a speed to power rusher. That's, that's how he plays the game. Well, that's Marcus Davenport. That, that's what he was supposed to be. He was taken in the draft too. Uh, Jared Verse we also had the, the freakishly long arms. Like this kid from Florida State. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but I think that's again that's a long shot. But I just heard it for the first time from KG, and I was like, you know what? I I don't think that's crazy. This team is in a position where like if they grab a guy like that. And by the way, too, if we're, if we're looking, I'm sorry, Spade, I didn't want to go, but like, Brad likes to build through the draft. Yes. Like, he's, he's not all about that. We, we saw it this year. He had the money to make these splash signings. He didn't do it. He likes to have him through the draft where he has control of that contract. And he can throw in that fifth year option or just have, like, uh, I guess, more capital to trade away. But, like, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident he's probably going to end up trading up in this draft class, if I'm being honest it's, with you. I wouldn't be surprised because you don't need to fill 10 holes on this team anymore. Yeah. It's not the Lions that Brad Holmes took over when he first got here where, shit, we don't have anybody. You have one of the deepest teams in the NFL. You have guys at damn near every position who are going to be very capable, if not Pro Bowl-level players. 
So you don't need to fill six holes in the draft so you can trade up to get that one guy who is going to be a difference maker because yeah. you look at the depth of the defensive line now with guys like James Houston, Marcus Davenport, Josh Josh Pascal, John, John Kaminsky, different players that are going to be rotating in and out to give spells to DJ Reader and Ali McNeil and Aiden Hutchinson. You can just go up and get the one guy you really need and then in the back end grab pieces that are going to sit and marinate for a couple of years that you don't need to play right away because of the quality of players you have on the roster already so I would not be surprised if Brad Holmes moves up he's shown us he's not afraid to move up in the first round he's shown us he's not afraid to move up or down anywhere in this draft yeah and if he has a guy that he has on his board that is better than anybody else he is gonna go up and get him so I, I'm not mad at it I would love to see Jared first opposite uh opposite Aiden Hutchinson with Ali McNeil and and DJ Reader in between him that would be one of the best defensive lines in the NFL if they made that happen I, I'm just saying, anything can happen to Brad Holmes in this draft. He has the complete freedom to do whatever he wants, and he doesn't have to fill a million holes like he did when he first got here. Now you're just looking for a couple missing pieces. Um, DNC ENT, the Wilbur Sports Chat, makes a great comment too, is like, well, he, he'd rather him trade back and then have more ammunition at that deadline. No, hard pass. You, you says no for you, Nick? Hard no for me. I kind of still want that blue chip type guy. You know how we went up our – or we did – we ended up trading back for Gibbs and a guy like we traded up for JMO, but like I'm thinking he's going to do one of those like explosive type draft day moves where all of us are like, whoa, we're kind of on the edge of our seat for a little bit. Who is Brad Holmes going to take? I think he does that, but this time adds to the defense. I don't know if he goes up for an offensive weapon. I think he does it for an elite player on the defense to pair with all of the guys he has drafted the last three years. Yeah. My, I think, and again, there's there's no telling what Brad Holmes is going to do. And anybody that's out there like arguing or like just saying like like disrespectful stuff to anybody else and and having this conversation with the boys or in the chat, you're both us included dismissed when it comes to making like draft uh, predictions for Brad Holmes. So you don't know you what he's going to do. You don't know what he's going to really do. You really don't. But he can do anything. I think there's more value in the trade up just because of that rookie deal mm -hmm. versus where if you want to, I mean, if you go over the deadline, yeah, you're getting like a. A for sure thing but what's that contract gonna look like what's what's the longevity of that situation too i mean don't get me wrong i wouldn't be mad at it but just like kind of just witnessing see what brad likes to do and in the same way he doesn't make these splash for agent signings and we also never been this close to like actually contending outside of maybe last year he's also never made those type of trades either so i think he'd rather have the guy under complete control and a rookie deal and I don't think we should be nervous about him going up to, to grab that guy too because it's fucking Brad Holmes Brad in the Holmes. draft. The guy is under you know undefeated. What he's gonna do in the draft is gonna be the right decision. And we've already seen him in his small tenure in Detroit trade up and get a guy he wanted in the first round and trade back and get the guy he wanted in the first round. So literally anything has happened. So I'm just extremely excited to see what he does because you're going to get a playmaker at that position. It's going to be a guy who starts day one, whether it be wide receiver or edge. I really think that's what they're going to attack in the first round. It's going to be a wide receiver or it's going to be an edge because if you look at their top 30 visits, man, it is littered with big body receivers mm -hmm. and big athletic edge rushers. Those There's like 10 visits of guys of that caliber. So I really think whether it be Xavier Leggett, whether it be Brian Thompson Jr., whether it be Neyland, Darius Robinson, trade up for verse. I don't know who it's going to be, but I'm almost 100% positive it's going to be an edge rusher or a wide receiver. Yeah, I'm looking right now too. And and maybe, I mean, J Jared Verse is just like the – the A plus guy, I, I guess I think that would be within like striking range for the Detroit Lions. But here are the actual edges he, that he met with uh, throughout the draft combine process. One Nelson Caesar out of Houston, the uh, soon to be national champions, according to my guy Nick. Uh, two Marshawn Nealon, who actually I, I like. I see him as like a mini uh, Aiden Hutchinson, if you will, out of Western Michigan. Uh, Darius Robinson, who's not a mini anything. That's a gigantic man. He's a huge human being. <laughs> Braylon Trice out of Washington, who I feel like is. Also kind of similar to Hutchinson, how he's just relentless nonstop. And then uh, Ed slash Sam, uh, Javon Solomon. So no Jared Verse in that mix, but I just, I just wouldn't be surprised at this point now that he's kind of like addressed all the, the needs per se uh, through free agency, and he's still got the bread to – dude, that's the crazy part too actually, Nick and, and the DNC and just every fucking buddy is like he could make that trade up and still do something like that. I, and that, that's obviously like yeah. pipe dreaming for damn sure. But it's it's a it's he could, he could. 
and um, where is it? Keys to wisdom. Our guards right now. Our um, guards. Our old old center is short term. Our guards right now and our center is <laughs> short term. We need Graham Barton type guy who can cover all three slots in here for years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They're going to get an interior offensive lineman in the first three picks of this draft. You can take that to the bank. But it doesn't have to be in round one now because you don't need an immediate day one starter. You don't need a guy that's going to be plug and play on that offensive line yep. now that you got Kevin Zeitler. You could have a guy marinate behind those three interior offensive linemen that are all versatile and all great at their positions. Like, Cooper Bebe, it's going to happen. I'm telling you. Um, one other piece, too, because to address so many of the comments, uh, Cartier, who's been saying, like, he kind of been hating on Aleem. Uh, he said, what extension would you give Aleem? You Aleem super fans. What we play in the star Aleem. Well, that's why you lock him up now because he hasn't reached that star potential yet. Yeah. But as a trajectory for the people who, and, and, uh, I guess I want to disrespect you, but from respected people like uh, the coach DC yes. who breaks down film and has 23,000 subscribers because he knows what he's doing when he breaks down the film. He's making sense of it, not just saying like wild shit in a random live chat. I love you, Cardi. I think for listening. But you, you lock him up now before that happens and, it, and the price is way, 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 way more. That, that's why you do it now, because it's going to be a lot more affordable now than it will be down the line if he goes out there and has that 13-sack season, yeah. which, again, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets like 10 of them at, at the least. 10? Yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. It'd be, it'd be somewhere around there, like 10 to 12. And shot, Cardi, I'm, I, I'm just giving you shit. We give everybody shit. We make fun of each other. Yeah, yeah. the reason I compared it to that is because we just saw Christian Wilkins walk away from Miami because they couldn't afford him. And they, he just got a hundred plus million from the Raiders. We don't want to be stuck in that situation. Yeah, you know that's exactly that's the reason why I say that. Yeah, Cartier says no. I don't take a personal go off. That's, he's a good sport. Let Shout me tell out. you guys about Lady Jane's. Lady Jane's. You can walk into any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, a hot lather neck shave, a scalp massage, or a hot towel treatment to finish it all off. Enter for your chance to win the 50k thousand bracket, the fifty thousand dollar perfect bracket <laughs> challenge. With more than twenty Metro Detroit locations, there's a Lady Jane's near you. Walk in any time, Lady Jane's. It's wicked awesome. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things: Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Shots, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Feel alive during Feldman Chevrolet's biggest New Year's sales event ever. Get the best prices on our huge selection of award-winning Chevrolets. Like this 2024 Equinox for $188 per month. Or this 2024 Silverado for $268 per month. It's the New Year sales event going on now at Feldman Chevrolet, Michigan's number one Chevy dealer. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. The offseason smells good. Woodward Sports. Sorokis! What happened? What's better than crispy chicken and pizza while watching your favorite team play? Let me tell you about Soroki's crispy chicken and pizza. Their food is amazing, and their locations are popping up all over Metro Detroit. They got one in Warren that's like a mile and a half away from my house. It is great stuff. A perfect takeout option featuring hand-breaded sides, fried chicken, New York pizza, fresh salad sides, and more. Check out their full menu and find the closest Soroki's near you at Soroki's.com. That's S-A-R-O-K-I-S.com. Soroki's and Woodward Sports. Now that's crispy. 
What up, though? Welcome to, to what that way it's live on sports.com. I'm easy, spin more racks. Hello, Unky Pete, Unky Nick. Yeah, let's go. Smash that like button, be a friend, tell smash. a friend, it means the world to us. Smash and that uh, like we kind of had a discussion yesterday, all week, all offseason, really. Like, what, what are the needs, right? And I think receivers obviously won. Uh, yeah, they re-signed DPJ, but we don't know if he's the answer. Like, we, none of us could for sure say that. We would be comfortable if you had to go in the next season and like that was the guy you were starting. Like you, you'd say, okay, like we we can have some work out with this. Like we, we've done it before. But Brad Holmes again, he could do whatever he wants at this point now. So if he perceives it as a need, we wanted to break down a few wide receivers for you. Yes. And Spinny, that's Jack Labrador, bitch. Labrador. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah, you win. Scissors beats Labrador. Okay, the the player that I've decided to spotlight, the wide receiver I've decided to spotlight is the spotlight. one, the only former Spartan dog, Keon Coleman. This is a guy what? who is going to be falling to the back <laughs> half of the first round or the beginning of the second round. He's a 6'3", 213-pound wide receiver. He didn't have the best 40 time. I think he ran like a 4'6", but he was the fastest with the ball in his hands running the, the gauntlet route. He got up to like 22 miles per hour when he was running with the ball in his hands in the gauntlet route. And, I mean, from my perspective, football speed is more important than straight line speed. And football speed is when you have the ball in your hands and you're running routes. Keon Coleman is a beast. I watched him personally up close for multiple years. He is a, a mammoth of a man. He trusts his hands. He goes up there. He makes contested catches. He, do, he does the things he needs to do. This is a piece that would... He's exactly what the Lions need at a wide receiver core. He is that X receiver you put out on the outside. You throw a jump ball to. He's a great red zone threat. Two years ago against Michigan. That first half, Keon Coleman was the best player on the field oh, against absolutely. Michigan. He was destroying that Michigan secondary. And that's a good secondary. And it's a great secondary. And then they were like, all right, we got to put everybody on this motherfucker, stop him. And then Jay Johnson didn't know what to do because he's a piece of shit. But that, that is a different story. Keon Coleman is a fantastic, fantastic player. I, I really think that this is a guy who can fit what the Lions are trying to do, who can fit what the, Lion need, the Lions need. Like I said, he is an X receiver. He's 6'3", 6'4", 215 pounds, plays the outside, is a jump ball guy, is a red zone threat. You know Keon Coleman. I know Keon Coleman. I still am extremely upset that he left Michigan State because, but I can't blame him because he went to he went to somewhere where he could try to win. But he was he was the best player on our team by far. By far, he was the best player on Michigan State's roster. He is a fantastic wide receiver. He's physical. He is great when it comes to blocking. I've seen him throw so many just nasty blocks when it was a Kenneth Walker outside run or a Jaden Reed sweep on the outside, and he just puts people in the dirt. Like th This is a guy who would fit what the Lions need. He would fit the Lions culture, and I, I would love to see him in Honolulu Blue. I don't know where they would get him. I don't think they'd use 29 to get him, but if he falls into that second round, We'll see. But I, I love Keon Coleman. Yeah. When I first saw the name of the sheet and I knew you were breaking him down, I was, I, was, I wanted to hear you sell me on him. Because I, I don't know if he's, like, what Brad's looking for. I, I think in terms of size, absolutely. Yeah. But then I got to thinking, if it's truly, like, fulfilling what Josh Reynolds was, I don't think, like, the separation's a big deal when it comes to, like, Keon Coleman. Because, yeah, he did rank top five, and every single one of those routes ran at the Combine. Mm -hmm. So maybe something he can do. And, and I think... A point I was trying to make yesterday is like we're talking about Jamo Flynn for for Josh Reynolds. Well, Jamo is making like the end zone grabs, like you know, above the head, over the top type stuff. Where I, like Josh Reynolds is like just plucking that thing out of the air, and I I don't know that Jamo can do that. At least I have, we haven't seen him do it like consistent enough. We saw a couple good catches actually across the middle, or one for sure. I think it was against the Broncos. We kind of just strong armed it, and we were like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was against the Vikings. I could be mixing those two up, or maybe there's two of them. I don't know. But Keon Coleman actually would fit that description in terms of, like, plucking the ball out of the hands. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a guy who played basketball at MSU, too. Like, mm -hmm. he's going to high point the ball and make those red zone catches. Like, maybe he does. I don't know that he fits what Jared Gall provides you, but at the same time within the system, <laughs> Ben Johnson makes everybody work. I mean, Shane Zilstra had a game-winning touchdown. Brock Wright had, a what, three, four, four touchdowns in one game? Am I getting that right? Or was that Zilstra, too? Mm, no, that was no. – Zilstra had three, I believe. Zilstra had three? Yeah. Nonetheless, though, Ben's able to make everybody work, right? And I, and I think Keon Coleman would fit that same one. So, actually, I, I don't hate it. 
I didn't hate it to begin with. I just didn't really see it. The guy I wanted to break down, and, and I'm not saying these guys are our favorites. We're just bringing up guys that may be there at 29, yeah. and just guys that just generally you should start start looking at or taking a peek into. And uh, Donye Mitchell was the one I chose. A six foot two, 205 pounds. I think out he ran a, a four three four out of Texas. Um, obviously, the speed's there. Obviously, he fits the profile of the guys that they met with at the combine. When you look at the uh, Devontae Walker, uh, Xavier Leggett, and Brian Thomas. Now, Brian Thomas Jr. is probably the biggest freak of them all, but at six foot two, running you know, four three, mm-hmm. it's pretty pretty fun good. It's pretty similar to what they wanted to do. I think he could play the X at the NFL level. Matter of fact, at Texas last year, uh, I got it right here. Yeah, he lined up out wide 80% of the time. So, yeah, yeah, he will be playing that X spot for you. And, and a lot of people point out wide receivers that I think will fill, like, a slot role. But we have one of the best, if not the best, slot receiver in the league. And I'm Ron St. Brown. I just don't see us acquiring a slot player with a free agency and or draft. I'm looking at the Xs. And I think Adonia Mitchell could do that for you. I actually was watching tape today. Well, I shouldn't have. I was driving. It was very dangerous. Don't do that. But I, I, the reason why I got dangerous, kind of rewind it real quick. What the <laughs> fuck? Because I saw him burn Teron Arnold mm-hmm. on an in route at Alabama. That's like perceived as like one of the number one cornerbacks in this draft class. I saw him do it twice. As a matter of fact, he had two touchdowns against Alabama in that game. I think the one knock you maybe would have on him is, I guess, maybe in traffic and stuff like that. But I think with this offense, that, that's really not too much of a concern. I think he's got the long arms. I think he had like 704 yards last year at Alabama and, and, and I'm sorry, Texas, and nine touchdowns. I think Adonia Mitchell kind of fits what Brad Holmes is looking for at the X position. I think he just has to get a little, a little more physical off the line if he wants to be like an X at the NFL level. Yeah. That, that, that's about it. Uh, Nick, Pete, where are you guys at with these, these names? Adonia Mitchell sounds intriguing. But my question to you is, where does he fall in this draft? Where are you willing to draft him? Like, are you is this a second round type guy? I think there'll be. I think a Donnie Mitchell and Keon Coleman will be right be, right around the same number in like the second late, round, late first I, round. I think a Donnie a little early, higher, early second round. Okay, because this is what I'm saying. If Brad ends up picking at 29, that means he has not given up his third round pick. Would you be willing to move up in the second round like he did for a guy like Brian Branch? You know, how he goes up and gets his guy. Are these two guys that you guys have illustrated that would be fits for this team? Or just breaking down some tape here? Yeah. Per- personally, for me, I think I think this class is just too deep to do something like that. Yeah, to unless, trade up in the second? Yeah, unless you're moving up to grab, like, one of the, like... Guys who fell out of the first round. Yeah, like, na- like unless you grab, like, one of those names. Like, maybe a Brian Thomas or... I'm not even going to mention neighbors. I just don't see that as a, as a thing they're going to do. But, mm-hmm. like, one of those guys, maybe I'd trade up for... This class is just so deep. Uh, I think I saw a comment over sports chat. Pearsall, I like a lot too, out of Florida. Yeah. Um, Somebody mel- mentioned uh, Johnny Wilson out of Florida State. Yeah, like six foot six. Six six. He's a big. I think he ran deep a four. Shot guy. I don't see what he ran actually. Yeah, he ran like a four five, I believe. But for Key, I think Keon's more athletic and has much better hands than Johnny Wilson. But still, Johnny Wilson is you know six six four 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 five guy. It's, it's tough to beat that. Yeah, but I think. I think this class is a little bit too deep to like want to make that move up. I mean, Xavier Luggett, another guy we love. The only reason I didn't do him is because we, we talk about him every day. Yeah. I think everyone's kind of yeah. familiar with him, right? Definitely love him. But yeah, there's just so many receivers. I don't know if you'd have That's to That's who Mel, to Mel Kuyper had the Lions picking Xavier Luggett at 29. At 29. In his, mm-hmm. in his newest mock draft wow. that came out today. And I got to be honest with you, too. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate it. Yeah. I really don't. I, I would think not be mad at it. I don't want to call him uh, DK Junior, but like that's that's what he reminds me of. Like yeah. watching him play, like he's got that yak ability, and I think we brought it up many times on this show. As like with Jared Goff, he's not really going to air it out. I mean, he can obviously with Ben Johnson like scheming things up, but like you want to surround him with playmakers, and that's what Brad Holmes has done. Jameer yep. Gibbs, Sam Laporta, oh. um, Ross St. Brown. Uh, obviously, we want Jameson Williams to develop, and he's been kind of going deep with him too, but uh, Josh Reynolds as well. These are guys that get the ball and, and, and do something with it after the fact. I think that's the type of wide receiver too. It would make sense. So Xavier Leggett at 29 would not hate that at all. Yeah, no. with Mitchell, 4.34 speed. If you're pairing that with J-Mo and yeah. then St. Brown and Laporta over the middle and what's coming out of our backfield, Nasty. this is in like that could be a crazy setup that you have on offense with the explosiveness and then the reliability over the middle with St. St. Brown and San Laporta. I mean, I would like it. And obviously, Keon Coleman, super, like, he can go up and get the ball at any time, which we are we have been missing on this team. So I do think there is a place for Keon Coleman. If he might have felt, if he falls in the second round, I just don't know if I love him at 29 personally. Yeah, I agree. Pete? Yeah, well, you you actually uh, you mentioned both of my wide receivers there, easy. I mean, Brian oh, Thomas sorry. from LSU. No, no, no. I'm just saying Brian Thomas from LSU and Xavier, you know, Leggett from uh, South Carolina. I, those are pretty much the guys. And, and, and Spenny, going to your tweet from last night, 
you know, about, you know, getting a wide receiver. Don't be, you know, don't be surprised if the Lions get a wide receiver. I, I think that, you know, if they can trade up for Brian Thomas or if Xavier Leggett falls to them, I think that that would be a perfect addition because they, I, I was big on them drafting cornerbacks, you know, and now that they've addressed the secondary, they've addressed the defensive line with good, yeah. solid pros. I think the next step is to get a wide receiver into that, into that mix. It's, uh, and like I mentioned to Spenny last night on X, it's a lot better going that route, you know, getting a, a rookie that you can get under rookie contract with, you know, legitimately solid, if not top tier talents, rather than a declining Michael Thomas. I mean, I'd rather have somebody on the draft board. So I think Leggett or Thomas Jr. would be it. Yeah, for sure. And we're about to go to break real Two fast. Two guys he met with, by the way. Yeah, too, Brian the Thomas combine. Jr. and so Xavier Leggett. Quite literally people that they're interested in. And so don't be surprised. Shout out to John Effing Lord and Sounds Good in the Woodward Sports Chat. Because, yeah, Spun More X Beats has an episode dropping at 7 after Shout the show. Out. So go over there and check that out after we're done here. But uh, tell us about Swiss. I'll tell you about Swiss, guys. Unfortunately, I got some bad news. Um, I hit a family of four on the way in. Jesus, bro. But they're insured. I'm just kidding. And they're okay. <laughs> That's how you get and the attention. They're all okay. That's how you get the attention That's in the room. That's why insurance rates are going up across you know, the board. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that was rough. I did not do that, by the way. When I was uh, watching film. <laughs> Bad news, insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is Swiss insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical that you have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier is not slipping extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com and tell them the heavy sent you. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at WoodwardSports.com. Just click on Shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. How would you like to win not one, but two vehicles of your choice? One for you and one for your wife, your girlfriend, or your best bud. Get to Lady James today for an award-winning haircut and automatically enter for your chance to win. Courtesy of Les Stanford Buick GMC of Ferndale. Lady James, open seven days a week, walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs. Food trucks and of course shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Hi, my name is Joe. I got a wife and three kids, and I just won fifty thousand dollars. And easy hit me. I'm car. leaving them all. <laughs> I scanned this QR code right here and start a brand new life. You can too. Join the World War Sports Bracket Challenge today. It's brought to you by Sorokis, Chicken and Pizza, Lady Jane's Haircut for Men, and none other than Glorious Cannabis. Fifty thousand dollars, Richard. Fifty thousand dollars. You scan this QR code and send in your bracket and get the best of them all, like Pokemon in them. WoodwardSportsBracketChallenge.com. I'm sorry. How long was I on the screen? Not right. long. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, smash that like button. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Share the stream. I'm easy. That's been more. Hello. At Speakeasy Sports underscore. At Spin More Rex. Yes. At. What is your. What is your. I'm ex? son of USFL dad. Really? Yeah, because my dad was the first uh, commissioner of the USFL. No way. Yeah, back in you didn't 19... know that? Yeah. I did not know that. Pete, hey, where's up on Pete? Pete, you keeping secrets from us? That's awesome, That's right, man. Yeah, good old dad. That's awesome. Nice having pops. Hell yeah, man. We got Uncle Nick, 
on the ones and twos. Smash that like button, be a friend, tell a friend, share the stream. And uh, we have some breaking audio that came in right. from our very own Matthew Broder, the Detroit Lions beat reporter for Woodward Sports. He had a question for uh, Kevin Zeitler in his Zoom conference, and it, it is great because one thing about Jonah Jackson that was the reason I didn't want to pay him and the reason a lot of people didn't want to pay him was because he couldn't stay healthy. And one thing Kevin Zeitler does is stay healthy. This man plays damn near every game. So here is what Kevin Zeitler had to say about his availability. Hey, Kevin, welcome to Detroit. I, I know you played with many great linemen, uh, one of which is Joe Thomas, who seems to never miss any games. Uh, you seem to be following in those footsteps. Um, what is being healthy and keeping your body, your body healthy and, and being available to the team mean to you? How much pride do you take in that? Oh, it's everything. The biggest, you know, thing you can contribute to this league is availability. Like, you know, no one cares why you're not on the field. You need to be out on the field. So luckily I've had a great body team, great trainers throughout all the way from the start of my career that taught me great habits that have like, for the most part, you know, I've been lucky enough to avoid anything major and stay healthy and keep moving and keep going. Well, there you have it. And as EZ says, that, that is a bald man. He's obviously, a ob bald man. obviously <laughs> he's got the face of a bald man, but doesn't have the head of a bald man. But that is a big thing because you look at that interior offensive line and, you know, Frank, he's – I love Frank, three-toe Frank. You never know. He might have to miss a game here or there. Jonah Jackson was always in and out. Obviously, Big V never really worked out, couldn't stay healthy. Now you got guys like Kevin Zeitler – and Graham Glasgow, who stay healthy and play at a high level, and that is extremely important for the continuity of that offensive line and their relationship with Jared Goff. Yeah, I think uh, it's – I don't want to admit it to myself, maybe. I'm just kidding. Jared Goff is going to have it another spectacular year and maybe even a better one. Uh, you know, that be, like, if he's able to stay as healthy as, like, projected, you know, from, from Broder. I mean, he is 34 years old, but he's, he's a mammoth of a man. Uh, he's, he's a beast. He's a Dan Campbell guy. I think even if he was hurt, it'd be like a Frank Ragnall situation. It was like, ah, damn, play. back in the game. Yeah, yeah, still in that motherfucker, like, doing the damn thing. Yeah, I have meniscus surgery, but I'm back next week. <laughs> yeah, because he is, he is perceived as a better pass blocker than he is a, a, a rushing blocker. So, like, JG having more time. I mean, the games that he struggled from, you know, the interior, he was getting he was getting bothered a little bit there. Uh, both Green Bay and... Both uh, in Chicago, like they, they brought that. I, I also, shout out to Justin Matabuke, we talked about earlier today. The Ravens as well. Mm -hmm. I, if you're locking down the interior of the, the offensive line, I mean, JG's going to have more time to, to, to just do damage, and especially if you're grabbing a guy like Xavier Leggett, which I, I did see the comment, Silky. He's, he's uh, not a full-time X, and I'm, I'm fine with that too. I, just, I looked at it as like a 60-40 split uh, on like between the X and the slot. Ben Johnson. 60 being the X. Well, Ben's going to move him around either way. Move again. And, and could play X here we'll once in a while too. I mean, like – yeah, I think uh, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal signing for the Detroit Lions just for so many reasons. And I think the other part of it, too, is like once again, if you guys missed it at the beginning of the show, if you're unaware, uh, Jonah Jackson, 17 per year in the AAV, but 13 million this year. Mm -hmm. You have Graham Glasgow and your, your former Pro Bowl guard and Kevin Zeitler at just 12. Mm hmm. 12 combined. Yes. Like, that's why this is such a master class. Because not only is it less than what you would have paid Jonah had you resigned him or at least try to match that offer, but he's also better. He made the Pro Bowl. And he's a better pass blocker in general. I mean, Jonah Jackson, all due respect, didn't even make it to the NFC Conference Championship game last year. Like, he's been missing a lot of games as a late. Mm -hmm. Kevin, as you heard in the Broder clip, he, no, it's not, that's not in his repertoire. He it's doesn't have he that on his resume. Not, not too many of those situations there. So it's. Detroit Lions are going to do damage, man. And, and we talked about it earlier a little bit as well. One of the worst games that the Lions played and one of the worst games that Jared Goff played last year was that Thanksgiving Day game against the Green Bay Oof. Packers. And a big factor for that was the anchors were putting on with guys like Tavondre Campbell and Rashawn Gary getting in there from the interior of that offensive line because you were missing some guys and because some guys were playing hurt. Now you have a dude who is one of the best pass blockers at guard in the NFL who doesn't miss games and who's ready to go out there and be the third piece of that great interior of the offensive line. Man, I, I'm just extremely excited to see what these guys – Jared Goff is going to be the least sacked quarterback in the NFL next year. Yeah, I mean, he was two years ago. Right? Yeah, and, and last year he was only three uh, – he only got sacked three more times than Patrick Mahomes. When Patrick Mahomes is the least sacked at 27, Jared Goff was sacked 30 times. Yeah. And so with these guys, dude, like – it's awesome. I'm extremely excited. Question I have to ask you guys. I don't know if a lot of people have brought it up on the network yet. Obviously, a 
he's going to be playing right guard where he's played his whole entire career. Does that mean we kick Grand Glasgow out to left guard? And are you guys 100% comfortable that that is just a smooth transition? Because he played right guard last year, I'm, last season. I'm 150 million percent confident with Graham Glasgow playing left guard. He's yes. going to be playing left guard in between his two best friends. Like, in between Frank Ragnow and Taylor Decker, who are his two best friends. So that whole left side of the offensive line, they're just going to be broing out the whole game. It's They're already extremely comfortable with each other. He's played every position on that interior offensive line. So, yeah, I'm definitely fine with Graham moving over to left guard. That's so funny because uh, my son Bryson and I, like when we, we play like with the, the action figures or whatever, and I'll be, like, kicking his guy's ass, and he's like, no, no, Dad. I'm like, why? He's like, because we have friends. the power of friendship. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I can't, not anime. can't tell him no. And yeah, <laughs> Graham Glasgow, Taylor Decker, Frank Ragnall got the power of friendship. <laughs> they're, all, they're literally on best friends. Side of the line. Yeah. So, hey, it's going to work in our favor. And, and by the way, too, I think that's kind of being overhyped, too, because like, I think for the first two years of Graham Glasgow's career, he played that left guard position, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Now, in I know between. It, Taylor Decker and Frank right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I think, he, again, he started the game last year, too, at left guard, and it, he played good. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little bit overhyped there. And, I, and I, by the way, I, I, the guy that happens to be a Pro Bowl, and I know it's only one Pro Bowl in his career, but he's, he's obviously highly regarded at the, the guard position. I'd rather him hold down that right guard spot because he's been doing it for so long and obviously can do it at, like, an elite level. Kind of similar to when, like, and I won't say as elite when it comes to Taylor Decker, and I'm not, that's not discrediting him, but, like, when Pinay got here and people are like, oh, start Pinay at the left. Well, no, when you have a guy that's – good at it and been doing it for a while that's, he's just kind of stuck in that routine and if he's going to execute that way there's nothing to like change there and uh, let him do what he's got to do and Panay can play the right and guess what it worked out it worked out and Dante 151 <laughs> in the sports chat Shout out to him for the super chat. Shout out. He said, uh, remember when the Lions used to have to overpay players to come to Detroit? Man, how times have changed with these Lions where players will take a pay cut to come play for a team that is close. It's true, man. People want to be a part of this culture. They want to be coached by Dan Campbell. They want to play for the Detroit Lions. We've never been able to say that before in my life. Like, even when we had... Matthew Stafford, Calvin Johnson, all these great players. Uh, what's Rob Gronkowski threatened retirement if he was traded to the Detroit Lions. Players want to come play in Detroit now. Yeah. It's it's amazing, man. It's an amazing change of events. Um, and just real quick too, why why if you guys are listening uh, tonight, I'll be going live with Dosa Dion. We'll be doing a mock draft. I'm sorry, I just got like put together right now. Uh, we'll be going like back and forth. Oh, pick yeah. one, pick two, pick one. So we'll, we'll be doing that tonight. Check it out. On uh, Dosa Dion's show, so make sure you guys check that one out. But, yeah, man. New I, episode, 7 o'clock, Spend More X Speaks. Yep. We'll be after that one, too, so you can yeah. you get both of them in there. Um, so, yeah, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, I think we're aiming for that one. But, yeah, i uh pretty fucking excited about this offensive line. They're still going to add to it. Would you rather the trade-up or would you rather, like, Graham, Graham Barton fall? Because Ragnar, no. uh, Decker's a free agent next year. Yeah, Decker's a free agent next year. It's... I wish I could also see him retire, or not retiring, but like signing for less. Than Just, yeah, I, I, I think Decker will be back. I yeah, think he'll he's, he's, made, he's he'll, made some solid money. He'll resign for a year or two, I'm, I'm sure. I'm not worried about Home that. Hometown discount. But yeah, yeah. They'll, definitely, uh, they'll definitely grab an offensive lineman in the first three picks. Uh, it, it's definitely going to happen. But like I said, now that you have Zeitler, you don't have to force it because he doesn't need to be a day one starter, and you can get the guy you really want and a guy that can develop behind him. Um, another guy spoke to me today, and I, I screen recorded it, but I didn't get to clip it in time to send it in to Pete. But uh, Amik Robinson spoke to me as well. And he's just every little bit of that, every bit, not a little, I'm not going to even go there. He's a dog. And I know I saw a couple comments in the live stream yesterday, hey, you guys kind of, I feel like we overuse the term dog. If, if Penny's a dog, if Hutch is a dog, guess what Brad Holmes and Dan Kilmer are doing? They're drafting dogs. They're drafting, they're bringing in dogs as an organization. I mean, that's why you see the culture turn around. That's, mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way because I do agree a lot of people throw around the term dog a lot, a lot like that. But, like, no, Amik is that. Amik is every bit of that. If I were to pick one person in the secondary to, to say he's a dog, be between he and Brian Branch and honestly, maybe even more – a Meek just because he, he talks it too. Yeah. A branch is still a dog in terms of like physical play and, and whatnot in the field, but no, Meek is going to bring that energy. And uh, this this defense is, is finally decorated enough to where you, we said it yesterday no more excuses for AG, no more excuses for anyone at this point, too, especially Terrell Williams end up being what he's supposed to be. And yeah, before we go to break, uh, what he's proven to be. Shout out, uh, who was it? Shout Runyon out. 99. Shout out Runyon. He said, uh, pancakes, waffles, or French toast? I'm going waffles 10 times out of 10. I'm a big waffles guy. Shout out to Dante one fifty one two for sending that super chat. Yeah, shout Ooh. out Dante. Send to our, you, Dante. our PayPal next time. Okay, Relax. Shit. tell us about Shake Shack. <laughs> oh, old tongue oh. twist and Shake Shack, eh? 
Here we go. I guess. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, I got the sleeper. It's the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Delicious. Try the Chicken Shack Sandwich for free with a $10 purchase. Grab a shake and a crispy crinkle fry, and a Chicken Shack will be free. <laughs> Just use the co promo code Woodward. That's in person, online. Make sure you guys download the app today again. That's a free Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Shippa shabba shippa. <laughs> promo code Woodward. Check it out. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with the fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod. Perfectly fried clam shrimp platter or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango I see. The ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit, but we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Wake up, Woodward. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m., live on Woodward Sports. Join Kool Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports. Sports talk, banter, and live fan interaction all on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. Well, we had all the fun talking about Detroit Lions football. Well, we got to get this one in. Because actually, no, I'm not going to die this segment down. This is actually kind of lit. Yeah. Because the guy that we've been waiting for, a guy we've been begging for to get called up all year, has finally happened. It's not due to great circumstances, obviously. But, uh, oh, Nick, get ready. What? Looking like Axel Foley in okay. there. Okay. <laughs> That's a player, ass Jack. Nick, I'm going to let you Shout introduce out. this one. We have... The biggest game of the season for the Total Detroit the Red Wings season. coming up. <laughs> exactly. Literally the Everyone's game after we have 15 this left. Is, is the biggest bigger. 15 game stretch. Ben Mo, a guy we've been waiting for all season with a team that has struggled on defense, a top 20 prospect in all of the NHL, Simon Edvinson. Yes. Playing tonight, you yes. got the call up. What are your expectations for him in this game, Spend Mo? Big Ed, Big Ed, bringing him up. I love, I love that. You need it because the defense has been god awful the past couple games. It's been completely terrible. You don't really have any competent defensemen outside of Cider and Wallman. I'm extremely excited to see what Simon can do on this. I don't know who they're going to pair him with. I haven't seen if that's out yet, but I believe Petrie, top four. Petrie, okay, Petrie. Yeah, not what I would love. All right, all right, now, you know. <laughs> God damn it. But, ah, fuck, man. <laughs> I hate Jeff Petrie He's so bad. But, okay, Simon Evanson, I'm excited to see what the kid can do. I'm excited to see him get his big body in those passing lanes to break up some of the passes, to get in front of the net and not just let a net front presence guy stand there and wait. We need we need him to be him. We need him to be Ed. We need him to do what he's been doing in Grand Rapids all year, which is play like a top four defenseman on the team. So I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm not worried about what he's going to do offensively because we don't need his help offensively right now. We need him to, to anchor that second pairing of the defenseman. And if it's with Petrie, <laughs> then it's with Petrie. <laughs> and we'll see where it goes. But So who's our third pairing then? Is it Sherratt and Ghost? I'm not sure what they have right now, but I know Wallman's out tonight. Oh, Wallman's out. Yeah, and talking about this So it's guy, probably Ghost and Cider are probably the first pairing. 
Or Sherratt and Cider, the first pairing, I'd assume. Yeah. I'm, I don't know right now. Petrie with Edmondson is a little scary. You're playing the young guy with, obviously, uh, I don't want to say too many <laughs> bad things about him because we need a win tonight. We need positive energy. Simon Edmondson, 29 points in 52 games down in Grand Rapids. This guy can kick start um, the break like nobody else I've seen before. He is super smooth on the ice. I'm really excited to see if it gives this team the boost that they've needed during this stretch because this has been a brutal stretch of hockey anybody with eyes can see that so this is a must win versus the last team place in the east yeah where it's a must win 100 percent here they're Spencer, right game. they're gonna win this game you you need four points in your next two games because you say this game's the most important game the red wings play all year no the next game when they play against the islanders yeah. that's the most important game they're gonna play for the rest of the year so you need two points here you're gonna you're way better of a team than the Columbus Blue Jackets. You need you need two points in regulation here, and I think they'll get it done. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Do you? I'm just excited to watch Evanson. That's that's what I'm here for. Yeah, I mean, then? like at this point in the season, you're kind of heartbroken already after that seven game skid. That was fucking crazy. So I, I think I actually I bumped that. I think everybody's excited to watch Evanson. There's no need to hype that up. Everyone's excited for that. Literally. How about another station in town calling for the head of the of Groot? Or what's the name of the movie? Gru? Gru. Gru? Gru. Oh, yeah. Gru. My boy. They're, they're, La -la. Yeah. they're saying fire news. Yeah. Who said it? it? Valeni said it? He said it. Yeah, but um, those guys don't watch it. I saw it on Twitter from, from uh, somebody else from that station as well. Costa? No. Stoney? Uh, Rieger. Rieger? Uh, well, Rieger's a troll. Rieger's a troll, for sure. But if you want to fire newsy, go ahead, fire newsy. Do it. Like, just... What, what, what's he supposed to do? What's he supposed to do when he has two competent defensemen on his team? When his captain and the guy that runs the whole offense and really the best power play guy or the best faceoff guy on the team by far hasn't played in seven games? What do you want him to do? You want him to just magically make JT Comfer a, a, a 1C? You want him to magically make Jeff Petrie a competent defenseman? You want him to take 10 years off Sherratt's legs so he can actually be good again? Like, what is he supposed to do to make these guys better? It's not on him. It's not his fault that all of your good defensemen aren't here yet. So, like, that's ridiculous. They're, they're overachieving this. Steve Weisman told you at the beginning of the year that this team wasn't a playoff team yet. They're overachieving. Yeah, he said at the draft, too. I remember it kind of broke my heart, the draft, because, like, you're finally waiting for it. Here you come, here you come, here you come. And then Stevie Weiss kind of telling you, like, yeah, I don't really know yet. And, again, like, this is only his second year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and we, uh, it's kind of wild to be saying shit like that. You know, the roster's not ready. You, Stevie Y told you he's not ready. And it's not like Stevie Y, anybody who's on his KC, there's like some scrub off the street. No, this is a guy that, that won at all levels outside of coach because he was above that because he, he sees the game at a whole, a whole other level. Then he went straight to the GM and, and he won that, that situation too. Like, yeah. if, you're, if you're saying fire Stevie Y, you're, you're a fucking idiot. Like, look at what he's built. Look at, look at the pipeline. It's not all about just the guys you have. Look at what he, he has the best pipeline in the NHL. You have so much talent coming up. This isn't the NBA. This isn't the NFL. You don't have guys who just hop in year one and are the best player in the league. Like, if you do, it's one of five players. And guess what? He's been doing this without a top five draft pick his entire tenure so far in Detroit. They Which get is, fucked in the, in the draft every single year and still have the best pipeline in the NFL. So if you're saying Steve Eisman, fire Steve Eisman, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because he, he can't just magically make these guys ready for the NHL. You need to be groomed in hockey. You need a couple years in the minors in hockey. These guys are ready. They're coming soon. Like, don't worry. And to, the Glenn. Yeah, to that point, <laughs> yeah. I know this team's been through so many ups and downs this season. Obviously, was anybody calling for his head when we won six straight? Nope. One against Colorado? Nope. nope. One, yeah, exactly. It's That's why it's, he called for his head I don't, year Yeah, two. I don't agree with it, especially the way Larkin goes out. But tonight... <laughs> There's no doubt about it. I need to see this team have a pulse, come out hot. I want to see our stars play like stars. An Alex Dabrinkit, a Patrick Kane, even a guy like Lucas Raymond that's taken massive strides this season. Put the team on your back and get the job done. This You're going up against the worst team in your conference. You need to show that tonight. Put all this behind you. Dylan Larkin will be back in the next week or so. Put the hot streak, the cold streak behind you and get to the damn playoffs. 
we were so excited to talk hockey earlier in the season. This city was so excited to talk hockey earlier in the season. Detroit needs to get back in the playoffs. It starts tonight. You have 15 games left. Let's see what they got. Yeah. Um, Steve-O, so Spencer, I remember when kissing the Red Wings' ass, they won six straight. And you know who you are. Yeah, we all were. They were. They won six straight. They beat the Avalanche. They, they beat good teams on the stretch, too. Yeah. It's not like they, they beat New York, too, if I'm not it mistaken. Happens, man. And it's like, like Alex Lyon, we, we knew what Alex Lyon was. We know Alex Lyon isn't cut to be taking the, the workload that he has. Like, he's never done this in his career. This is the first time that he's been taking this many games, playing this many games, starting this many games for a team. So it was going to come crumbling down eventually just from his ass. You can't expect him to stop 40 of 44 shots every single game. Like, 42 of 40 shots, of 44 shots every single game. He, he wasn't built to be the number one goalie like this. That's why in the prospect pool, you've got Kosa and you've got Augustine, who are the guys going forward. Like, shit just doesn't, like, hockey is different than any than the NBA and the NFL. And I understand if you don't watch hockey, you don't know hockey, you don't understand hockey, how you can be frustrated at this point. But it, it's a lot different when you're looking at hockey prospects compared to any NFL and NBA prospects. And, and by the way, too, I even hate to say this, and probably, I probably shouldn't say this, but, like, that initial statement is coming from a guy that I think is respected highly around town, at least as a radio host. Yeah. After he had mentioned the DJ Reader stuff, kind of like shitting on that, that's when I realized he's doing it for the He's a the shock greatest. value guy. Yes. He's a shock value guy, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and that's I was like, okay. And well, he does it well. He does it better than anybody in the city by far. He's yeah. one of the best in the country at it when you look at the numbers. But Yeah, after the, after the, after the, the Reader comments or in the, in the Carlton comments, I was like, yeah, that's just way off base of like anyone. If you, if you watch the sport, if you actually pay attention to the sport, you're way off base. Yeah. Way, way, way off base with both those names. And I feel like this is the same situation too because like if you're talking about firing who you replaced him with, yeah. you, you got to come up with like a, a name after the fact. You know what I'm saying? Like if that's going to be the case. And that, 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 wasn't the, that wasn't the scenario. He just blatantly said fire because it's dead season right now. Mm -hmm. and they yeah. don't watch no football, I guess, to talk about draft. I don't know. No doubt there. And just to take a look ahead, we are minus 172 tonight against Columbus. Mm -hmm. And home ice, you know, defend LCA here. Got to pick up a W. And I'm pumped up to see Edmonton hopefully bring a spark to this team. I that agree. Lord knows they need it. Got to win this game and got to win your next game against uh, against the uh, the Islanders as Raymond well. Raymond fourth yeah. overall, says uh, Soki Johnson. Raymond yeah, fourth Raymond overall? Yeah, Raymond was fourth, but yeah. there was... Uh, undisputed top three in that draft yeah. is what everyone said well let me tell you about big boy seafood fest is back at big boy catch it while you can dive into the fish and chips their new parmesan crusted cod perfectly fried clam strip platter or delicious fish sandwich a big boy must try the new mango iced tea the ultimate compliment for their new popcorn shrimp shrimp alfredo or shrimp stir fry every day is a fish fry at big boy and don't forget every friday night the all you can eat seafood buffet all that and more at your local big boy Love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Feel alive during Feldman Chevrolet's biggest New Year sales event ever. Get the best prices on our huge selection of award-winning Chevrolets. Like this 2024 Equinox for $188 per month. Or this 2024 Silverado for $268 per month. It's the New Year sales event going on now at Feldman Chevrolet, Michigan's number one Chevy dealer. How would you like to win not one, but two vehicles of your choice? One for you and one for your wife, your girlfriend, or your best bud. Get to Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut and automatically enter for your chance to win. Courtesy of Les Stanford Buick GMC of Ferndale. Lady Jane's. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Every year after a cold and dreary winter,
Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. The new glorious ice water bubble hash pre-roll now with diamonds. Ooh. Constantly <laughs> pushing to create the best cannabis experience. The perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust. Glorious. Allow- allowing flower with only the highest terps, making the best even better. Glorious cannabis. Check us out at your local retail- retailer or gloriouscannabis.com. Uh- if you guys haven't already, please, please, please make sure to hit the like button. Uh, right now, this is the time we do a little bit of mailbag, so definitely send your questions in. But I learned something about my friend today that I didn't know ever, and his dad was the commissioner of the USFL. First. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mailbag Pete a little bit here. Pause. Before we do that, that is a pause. Before we did, uh, Romeo Quara announced his retirement on his uh. Instagram from the NFL. He says, after some introspection and meditation, I decided to step away from the NFL. The game of football has been a great and large part of my life for the greater than 18 years, eight of which I saw a fortunate enough to play at the professional level, four of those with my brother. The experiences, friendships, camaraderie I have been lucky enough to share with my teammates, coaches, and peers is something that I will forever be grateful for. You all mean the world to me, and I will continue to cheer on you. For, uh, cheer, cheer you on for the rest of your lives. T- today, Junior? Detroit Lions organization, thank you for giving this young kid a chance six years ago after coming into the league as a free agent. My heart is forever with you and the city of Detroit. I am excited to see what's next as I navigate this crazy transition away from the game. So shout out to Romeo Okwara. Shout out to Romeo Okwara. Shout out. Shout 20, out. 2020, 10 sacks. He thought he yes, was sir. Dominant. Shout out on a good career. Pete, how did your dad become the USFL commissioner? Like, what was his history beforehand? Well, my father was a uh, a judge, a, a, an appointed circuit court judge here in Detroit, and then he did some law work for the Thanks. USFL when it first became, uh, you know, when, when the f- subject first came up in the early '80s. And then my dad actually introduced the league. You can you can see the clip on YouTube of my father introducing the league at the New York Athletic Club in 1982. Uh, anniversary of that coming up, I believe, it was early May. And then he also did some law work helping out the owners of the Michigan Panthers. Uh, Al Tobman, Max Fisher, and uh, and and everybody else that involved with the Panthers, and so as, as his payment for his law work, they gave him a very, very, very small percentage, like like less than one percent ownership of the Michigan Panthers. So I have brought in my dad's USFL championship ring from 1983 when the Panthers won. He actually got a oh, ring. Yeah. yeah. So it was so he was the first interim commissioner of the USFL in uh, May of 1982, and then he was minority owner of the Michigan Panthers uh, for only one year, then sold his interest uh, because it was at max value. They'd won the championship. and. Nice. Smart businessman. There you go, brother. Yeah. Hell yeah. For sure. Fuck yeah, that's dope. Shout um, out. What would you want to be when, when you are growing up? Me? Yeah. Well, you're looking at it. Been broadcasting. Hell yeah. Yeah, I wanted to go into acting, but too many weird people. Ah. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> no, I've there seen are weird people here in this business. Some, someone asked you to do something for a role? No, no, no. I, I, I used to be in theater and all that sort of fun okay. stuff. It was great. But then the older I got, the weirder people got. And I said, I want to you know, go with less weird. So, What's like the biggest role you got? Um, I was in Me and My Girl. I was a, a, a play called Me and My Girl back in high school. So I was like one of the lead characters in that. And I got like a standing ovation for my role. And Any movies or anything? No, no, no. Oh, actually, well, okay. Let him cook. I was in a movie called The Rosary Murders, which was filmed here in Detroit with Donald Sutherland uh, way back in the, like, I think it was like mid-80s. And uh, my part got cut. 
Oh. Damn. <laughs> I was an what? altar boy. My part got cut. All right, one more thing. I promise we'll read some, some mailbacks for the chat if they're there. Did you sing in this play? Did, did, did yes, this, I can sing. Oh, okay. And I was in a rock and roll band for two years called what? Afterburn. I remember yeah. the picture. That was a, that's a wait, sick wait, picture. Wait, wait, what picture? You have a picture? Uh, uh, well, you one. guys go on, and I'll bring up the picture, and then I'll, th I'll throw it in the cam for everybody to see it. All right, bet. We'll close out the show with that one. We'll just, right. just put your picture on his last image. <laughs> Uh, Mailbag, D and C, E and T. Mailbag says, uh, y'all popping out to SmackDown on the 12th. I thought, oh, it's only not, oh, April 12th. It's got to be. Rock will probably be there because it's the season premiere. If The Rock is there, I'm not a WWE guy at all. But if The Rock is there, I, I, I mess The Rock. So I don't mess with If there's an opportunity to go, I'll The Rock take is it. a terrible actor. Thank you. He's still the man. He is, he's a cool guy for sure. Yeah, he's a fucking Very rock. cool guy. But he's a terrible actor. Um, He's a great wrestler, fantastic. One of the best wrestlers. Yeah. Awful, awful actor. That's fair. Most wrestlers are. John Cena's pretty good. John Cena's like, that's what I say. Okay, thank you for saying that because yeah. I say that and people are like, no, Batista might do Batista's roles. I feel like he's the same person every. I role. haven't seen Batista. I heard that one movie Batista did with like Isn't the he in girl too? was like really really good. Spenny, didn't Actually, you say you loved Hulk Hogan as Santa? Yeah, yeah, Santa yeah. with muscles, yeah. fantastic what? movie. Oh, Santa with muscles. Hulk Hogan plays Santa, and he uh, has to rescue an orphanage from being destroyed because there's a diamond mine. Oh, I think I've seen that actually. Yeah, great movie. Isn't isn't uh, uh, one of the worst movies I've ever seen? But it's no, it's, it's fun. a great movie for no, you as your not. kid. It's a terrible movie. No, because wasn't Macho Man that one too? I don't know. I'm pretty sure but, Macho um, Man was in that movie too. Did you guys? I think Kevin Long or. Who? Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash is a pretty good actor for a wrestler. What else is he in? I just remember Longest his role Yard, yeah. in Longest Yard, and he's really good at it. Stone Cold plays a racist pretty well. Yeah, he does. That's how a white man plays the guitar. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in the accent, right? Now, 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 now. Mississippi Queen. That's a great song, by the way. But That's a good movie, too, by the way. Oh, Longest Yard is my favorite Adam Sandler movie. So many stars in that one? Yeah. Pete, sit it in Slack. Well, uh, I will, but let me, uh, let me, let's throw it up here for everybody to see. Let's see if you guys can find me. It's just me and Spinny. Oh, sorry. It would yeah. help if I actually like, move the camera. There you go. P yeah, you got the you got the in Slack. Man. Are you bottom left or bottom right? I'm in the middle. You're in the middle. Hell yeah, P. Put it in Slack so we can see it. Damn it! There right, we go. That's a little better. P. Glasses on. Yeah, with the glasses on. Well, we all have glasses on, but Hell there yeah. you go. Afterburn. <laughs> Afterburn, baby. What was what was uh, Dad's approval rating of the band? Phase. He said, hey, my, my father said, as long as I'm happy and, and making money, which we made a lot of money, he was Fuck like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Do what you want to do. My dad was never like, I want you to be a judge. I want you to be a lawyer like me. He's like, you do what you want to do. Hell Pete, yeah. where was the biggest venue you guys played? Uh, we played the IROC, which is in Detroit, right across the, the freeway from Harpo's. We had about 700 people there, and it was packed, jam-packed. Hell yeah, Pete. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Rock and roll. Burn, rock and baby. roll, baby. I love rock and roll. But that'll do it for us today. Appreciate you is all Is any of your music in. on the internet? Huh? Is any of your music on the no, internet? No, because we all, we did family covers. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll grab the old cassette tape for you guys. There we go. Point and I'll bring it in. All right, <laughs> that'll do it for us today. Appreciate you all tapping in the woman heavyweights queen. for Easy, for Pete, for Nick. I'm Spencer. Spemo Rack speaks. Episode at seven. Go check it out before the Red Wings Don't game. Don't be on live mock draft back and forth. Kanye Red Wings. Smash must, the like button. Must win. Let's go Red Wings. Must win tonight. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Rock on, Garth.